There, there we go. I, I hope everything's all right. Hopefully, all the levels are are where they should be. It's uh, uh, you're you're a little out of practice. I am a little out of practice. It's it's been. I mean, uh, wow. So I mean, really, like I was not here the last two streams. Well, neither one of us were here last last stream. Right, so, right, right. But like, I played, cool. like I played super, uh, not Super Princess Peach, uh, Princess Peach Showtime. Yes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then it was me and Audie, mm-hmm. and you were out, and. Yes. And then, yeah, so it's it kind of a last minute decision for me to take off Easter, but I I thought it was something. That's a, it's been a good little while. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun because, uh, you know, I think I said we should play. I should play Puppeteer a while ago, and I haven't forgotten mm-hmm. about it. H- have you you beaten it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I played it when it came out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you I know, have, I. It's it's a really good game. Well, you know, I guess people people did bring it up. I guess now I'm connecting the dots. People brought it up because people were like, oh, Puppeteer did what Princess Peach Showtime is trying to do, but better. Right, right. And that's probably true. Um, although I still think Peach Showtime is a totally, totally pleasant little game. Yeah. Um, but that's probably true. Um, I, um, I, I always find, though, every time I boot it, up like you know it's a it's a good looking ps3 game sometimes i want to capture footage from good looking ps3 games and um uh it's always hard to just like jump in mid game because like there's like the little scissor mechanic and there's just like little thing like the swapping heads mechanic and there's just like little things going on that's like i don't really know how to do this like just picking up the game after a long time, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember the Moon Bear King. See, I don't remember any of that stuff. I just remember one level where you're like on the highway or something like that. Oh, I don't remember that. The Moon, the moon Bear King is, is the main main villain. Tenderbrew is saying, uh, I hear yeah, some, some feedback, feedback I, on I the audio. Is, we'll be do you think that's... Like, what do you mean by feedback exactly? Yeah. Uh, are you hearing... Echo, uh, does it does it sound like? Are, are you talking like background noise? Like what what exactly are you talking about? Yeah, well, we'll find out. We'll find out. Well, anyways, how's everybody doing? Like a hum. Could it could it be my 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 air air conditioning? I don't hear your air conditioning. Okay, most people are not hearing. A bit of a anything. buzz or some hum. are. Um. Some hear it, some don't. I mean, if I go like that, let me know if it if it disappears now. Well, if you turn if you turn me off, does it go away? It's I'm, I'm it just still curious. There? Like turn turn turn. I just turned. I turned you off. It's still there. The only thing I think it could be is just this microphone uh, picking up on. on it's like, it's like, like a speaker or mic, or mic interface. Uh, if I go like this, does it go away now? Let me know if it's gone away. Um. <laughs> but yeah, I I don't I don't know that that's. Is it- that is uh, that is a mystery. I, I I thought it might be me because I turned my microphone way up. Um, <laughs> it was it was kind of funny. Uh, Wait, uh, really we quick. Were... I, I'm gonna I want to mute mine to see if it's me. Okay. 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 Cor- Corey is muting himself. Was did did it go away when Corey muted himself? Did did it go away? Still there. Could it be? Could it be from the game? Like, could it be from whatever the audio line is you're writing in for game audio? See, this is why I I do I I mix yeah, I'm using audio. I'm using the built-in audio. I'm not feeding it. Anything. Okay, okay, okay. Um. 
So it didn't go. It doesn't go away when you mute either Let of us. Then what see. could it be? Let me just try something real quick. I promise I won't be gone long. I'm gonna go right down here. <laughs> anyway, while he does that, um, I was I was just saying I had turned my mic audio up this week because I was recording a I recorded a podcast with uh, it's like a a side podcast I guess for. Uh, uh, Axe of the Blood God, which is Nadia Oxford's uh, RPG podcast. We bumped into her when we were leaving Midwest Gaming Classic, and we were talking about Final Fantasy XIV. And she's like, "Oh, do you like four? And I'm like, "Yeah." And she's like, "Please come on my podcast. I need someone who both loves Final Fantasy IV and is caught up on the main story in Final Fantasy XIV, because uh, uh, they were." recording a podcast on Final Fantasy 4 stuff and uh, Final Fantasy 14. So that was fun. Uh, Are they saying it's still there? I don't know. Uh, did, did it go away? Anyone who heard it before, did it go away? Still there. If I do this, tell me, ask them if it goes away. Okay, we should be back now. All right, I, we're I, back. Let me know if, are we back? I want to know if it if it fixed it. Did it fix it? Sean wants to know: Can Sandy fix the audio? Zane's dad says try has never been this quiet before. Zane's dad got to hear my volume in person <laughs> at Midwest Gaming Classic. Is it gone? Is it gone? Fixed. I'm gone. All I right. think Tinder Brew was the first to report it. So if yes. Tinder Brew says it's gone, it's gone. Tinder so Brew what is was what was it? the hero of the day. <laughs> I mean, maybe. We just like wasted all that time doing this. Yeah, like half the stream is already left, probably. All right. You know, you know what fixed it is just a good old uh um ground loop isolator. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, you know. That's all it takes. But why was it why was it? Um, probably because like Not I there previously. Um, I feel like I switched something maybe at some point. Probably the main output because I, um, I told you about my uh, persona speakers having like these, uh, like on certain tones, I would hear like sound, like a like a high pitched oh, sound. Right, 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 right. Yes, and yes. it drove me crazy. And I, so. and this was like right after I got. <laughs> I An know, updated version I know, of the same speakers I know. myself. So uh, I ended up getting 
new speakers. I ended up like splurging for those uh, magnetically shielded uh, Yamaha MS, oh. uh, whatever, like whatever. But they're magnetically shielded, which is good because like they're very close to my PVM. Yeah. So, anyway, so they have XLR something that, inputs something on the back. Something and all that got it out of whack, I guess. Yeah, it's all fixed, though, now. That's all we need to know. And the levels are good. We're back. We're back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the hydro spammers, you know, it's, it's... If anything ever falls on me, and I don't know it's happening, I'm, I and it doesn't hurt that bad for me to, like, have, you know, like, be aware of my surrounding, I'm always like, ow! Joey! <laughs> <laughs> all right how's everybody been it was it was great seeing a lot of you i had a lot of people come up to me during the midwest gaming classic saying, saying uh that they they love watching the stream oh yeah i mean there were you know we were especially on saturday i feel we were like separated for a long time because like i, I feel like just the sheer scale of the show like we went I think had the longest stretches of time, like just not even bumping into each other. Right. Yeah. So there were times where we were like wandering around together and people said hi to us together. There were times where people were just saying hi to us individually. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, kind of one of the things that's unique about Midwest gaming classic is um, that they kind of encourage their guests to like just roam yeah, about and say it. hi to people when they say hi to you you know like that's yeah. what you're there for like you don't necessarily gotta run a table you don't even have to have a panel we had like a mini panel of sorts on the bonus stage yeah but otherwise we were just kind of there we were just uh, <laughs> shopping there fun the whole time and that's the thing you know it's it's silly uh like how much more time like I spend like shopping at vendors than I do like actually playing games in the arcade and everything like that. Like it is like probably like 80, 20, like a divide yeah. like that where I am like shopping like 80% of the time. Yeah. Oh and yeah. Yeah. Like there's more in the other room, like 20% of the time. If that, it might be I mean, there's more, 10. There's more things that I want, I would like to do at cons, but like the draw of shopping for games is just too strong. Yeah. And you know, you just never know what you're going to find. And uh, I know like, I mean, even, even beyond that, like I would like to look at like the art vendors at conventions more than I do, but yeah, I'm always looking at games. I just can't stop myself, you, you know, can't stop yourself. You know, I, I, this, this has, hasn't happened in a long time, but I used to have this like recurring dream where you go to a con and you never go to the vendor. Yes. Did you yeah, have that I've too? I've had that dream before. <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah, does anyone, and it's like the does stupidest anyone else have possible this dream? like bad dream scenario I can think of. <laughs> like, oh my God, I did not, I went to this convention and I didn't <laughs> shop for games. Like, <laughs> like that is it's, that is, is so bad that you like have a dream like, that you perceive it to be the worst thing that you can possibly have like, happened to you by going to something like that. That that's like the lowest stakes nightmare possible. Yeah, I know <laughs> it is. It is it's it's sort like, of like pathetic. Like it is. I mean, we we are freely acknowledging the fact that that is. A really, really stupid bad dream to have, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it has yes. happened. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I've, I've had that dream. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're, stupid. you're there for like, like two oh, or three I'm sorry, days. I was too busy, like having so much fun. I didn't feel like I needed to shop for games. I know, like you're just like you're, you're doing all these other things, and like the last day comes, and you're just like, I've never even seen the vendor room. Yeah, I've been, what I, I need to run through there. It's so stupid. Yeah, then it, you're like, like you're it, like it gets, it gets to, dumber the more I think about it. Like the last fifteen minutes or something, and like you just just can't get anywhere. Yeah, and when in reality, that's probably the best time to like be shopping. I that mean, last, maybe last fifteen minutes where you're running around 
Oh yeah, Pot Belly Punch. I remember I remember saying hi to you last year. Yeah. He wasn't having a beer. I, I was having a beer. Um but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh my 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 feet definitely hurt afterwards. Uh met a, a lot of a lot of great shoes. My, my feet were fine. Well, I have like insoles and everything in mine. But I mean it's just like a long time on your feet. Sure. Um, sure. Uh, there was there was a notification that Legendary K4 has been a member for 14 months in a row. Dang. Saying uh, playing Kingdom Come Deliverance on main monitor and watching you play my new to me second monitor, which is a ViewSonic 21 inch CRT. Life is good. Um, Ooh, so new you to can... me second monitor. Life is good. CRT that that, that it, it, does it sound. LG? No, it's not an LG. Second monitor, a view Sonic. View Sonic. LG. Yeah, I, I had a. Life's good. I, I I've had a few view Sonic products in my day. Um, do you have like the stuff that you you bought at the convention? Uh, by you? Because you should you should start uh, with all. I don't. All right. Well, do you want to go through it? I can get it relatively yeah, easily. Yeah, I mean, you, you should go there. grab them, and then you know, like I'll grab mine later on. But I'm I'm sure. gonna start the game because. We've wasted 27 minutes horsing around here. Cool decision. Um. Oh! We got a, uh... $20 from Tender Brew. And, you know, I gotta say, any anything... A, a donation like that deserves a... Oh, a big one! <laughs> I, I am like way too excited about that soundbite. I've been been playing it for everybody who will listen. Oh, a big one! <laughs> I, I I should change the donation uh, thing that plays to say "Oh, a big one." I'm waiting for try to get back before I read your twenty dollars. Um, yeah, Sega Bass Fishing has some really, really good ones. Uh, I pulled out some new ones. Uh, Try, you missed it, but I, I was just saying uh, uh, when we get a... Tender Brew sent in a $20 donation, and I said... Oh, a big one! <laughs> Did it... Oh, that, that was kind of... Uh... Uh, that was very unclear on uh, <laughs> on my end, but I know what it was. Oh, yes, what are oh, these? Big one. But Tender Brew with twenty dollars says, "Just want to call it those retro access SCART cables for PS One." I know I'm super late, but what voodoo is this? It feels like it's fake. How <laughs> much it improves it? It's crazy. I've been hunting PS One discs like crazy because of it. Yeah, you know, I I have been like really into. Uh, PS One, like since doing that. Well, that was like the main video. thing you were looking. That was like for. the main thing I was looking for when I, uh, when we were at the at the thing, and I got I got some good stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, PS One is amazing, and uh, you know, I I have like one of their older older Scar cables, and it's it's great. Um. Yeah, I, like like PS One stuff was the main thing that I was looking for because I don't know it was specifically because of Gradius Gaiden <laughs> uh, going into the episode. I like spent a bunch more time playing Gradius Gaiden on that uh, Gradius PSP collection. I'm like, man, this is awesome. So I went on and found somebody who was selling it, and they were also like selling their entire PS One collection. So I bought that, and I also bought like the uh, the Twin B Deluxe Pack for PS One, and the Salamander Deluxe Pack uh, for PS One. And I'll tell you one thing, that that uh, that Salamander Two, I never really played it, but it is a gorgeous game. Oh yeah, oh Salamander Two. Yeah, yeah, I played that. Uh, I played it at John's house. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. <clears throat> 
Um, did you also see the notification that Zane's dad has nope. been a member for 38 months in a row? Dang. Zane, it was great to meet you both. And thanks again, waiting for Zane and mom to finally find us so you could meet Zane too. Hope you got some good food, Corey. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. Were you hungry at the time? I don't, I don't, maybe I hadn't eaten anything. Maybe we were like going to get dinner or something like that. Yeah, uh, I, don't I did recall. not buy the big refillable cup of of beverage though oh yeah i was if, if i had known about it like at the start of the yeah. the convention i probably would have done it heck yeah um uh but anyway while you get going i can go through uh some of the stuff i got yeah um uh let's see since you were talking about ps1 uh, I will show I got a super clean copy of Ridge Racer 1. Uh, the Japanese version, that is. Um, mostly because you got, and this was something you brought, uh, it's actually in this bubble wrap still. You, <laughs> From when you I got my got, when, you, when you got your Nejikon, it came with a copy of the Japanese copy of Rage Racer, which is Ridge Racer 3. Yeah. And then when I was in Germany, I happened to see a Japanese uh, Ridge Racer Revolution. And I was like, well, I guess I'll just get the Japanese versions for the first three games. What up? I'm going to skip. Um, so, um, so, yeah, we, we, you actually pulled it out of the, of the bin. Um, he was the moon realm yeah, and that was. Really nice. I saw many of those were like a lot of times more expensive than that, and in much worse condition. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, they had some good stuff in that bit, in good shape. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, so this was from Corey. This was from the show. Um, but then, I all like I I never look at at 3DS games. Yeah. Um, because like, I don't know, like I, I got what I want and it's not, I, I enjoyed the 3DS when it was current, but just because of the form factor and the annoyances and capturing it, which I can do, but it's still annoying. Um, I just, I just don't play it. Um, it's just not something I, I tend to just like pick up for my own enjoyment. Anymore. Um, but I did play Ridge Racer 3D at John's house mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's good. So I want to keep an eye out for it. So I kept an eye out for Ridge Racer 3D. And then when I found it, I proceeded to stop looking at 3DS games. <laughs> I got the uh, the Vita version, but it, I mean, I don't know. That seems to be an unpopular choice. Also, uh, while we're on Ridge Racer, uh, the, 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 this is kind of like one of the last two things I bought. Like we were at that last vendor. I had $16 left. I, I bring a set amount of cash to conventions. Uh, this is not the way of Corey, uh, but I, I bring a set amount of cash and it's like, I, I think I think I bought one thing, like one thing with a credit card. Maybe, maybe not. Cause I can't even think what it would have been. I feel like I did. Maybe it was food. I don't know. Cause I don't, I, I don't, I don't put food on, 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 I do cash for food at cons. Cause like I, I, I buy the money for my spending money, whatever I'm feeling comfortable with at the time. Or well, apparently the game audio is a little high. It's unusual. I, I, I fixed it. I saw it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Bob my much says, I bring a set amount of credit cards to conventions. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> That's what Corey did. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but anyway, yeah, I got this R Racing Evolution, which I forgot even existed. This is like, I think it might be American developed. I'm not sure, but this is like trying to be like a more serious Ridge Racer or something, I think. Yeah. But it was 11 bucks. I, the GameCube version comes with like Pac-Man Versus, which is kind of neat, but it, that copy was in less good shape and a little more expensive. So I got the PS2 version. And at the same vendor... 
I, I just bundled it together with <laughs> Resident Evil Apocalypse UMD video. Because I like buying video game adjacent movies on UMD just for the heck of it. I don't yeah. have a lot though. What what do I even have? Uh, I've got Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Yeah, I have Doom. And Bat Batman the movie, which is not video game adjacent. I thought I might have another, but maybe that's maybe that's all I got. I, I'm always looking at, at that kind of thing though, just because I'm like, oh, you know. I, it's not like a format I would ever actually watch a movie in, but it's, you know, if it's video game adjacent, I just think it's fun to have it on UMD. It might be useful for a video one. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. On Sunday, I mostly got PS2 games on Sunday. <laughs> um, a few of these, I feel like the price went down a little bit from what I, uh, what I had seen. Um, before I get into that, though, I saw there there was a uh, $5 super chat from uh, Simisir Official. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> saying, fun says. fact, what if my teachers worked on this game? If you see a Matthew Porcano uh, in the credits, he was my 3D animation teacher my sophomore year. Wow, that's really cool. That's Especially, super like, specifically, cool. Specifically, like, for this game, too, you know? Yeah. That moon bear king is always... I feel like this is probably um, one of those games that has become expensive now. Well, I think it is. I mean, I think, I, I don't know if it's that expensive, but I think it's like the price, it's used the price it was new or maybe a little more. I don't think it's ultra expensive though. But yeah, it was, it was kind of overlooked in the day. Uh, cause people were just like, well, I mean, I think it releases a $40 game, so it's not like they were asking for like, you know, full price for it or anything, but I mean, I, I got it day one. It looked like a game I would want to play, you know? Yeah. And I, I wonder if it didn't do good a little bit because it almost looks, I mean, I don't know if this is like a, a reason that it didn't do good or what it just, I mean, it looks very close to little big planet. Yeah, I, I can I can see that, and it's just like oh, it's a little big plant, but like there's less stuff to do. It, it you know without the creation aspect, but without I think the creation, the I can really see that. Who didn't really follow it? They probably thought like oh, it's just another one of those little big plant games. I just bought the second one or something. Like yeah, that, probably. Yeah, I can see that. Um. Remember to pick that up quick. No it was a late PS3 game. And, you know, it's a, it's a 2D game, and maybe 2D games weren't fully back in vogue yet. Yeah. You know? Like, I think they had just started to come back that generation. But anyway. Wow, Pop Belly Punch says, I sold my puppeteer at that time for like $120. Wow. I don't think it's worth that now. Unless maybe sealed, I don't know. But anyway, uh, PS2 games I got. Um, I got a. Uh, uh, well, th th I mean, this was a. Well, th this was actually a little more expensive than I thought, but I looked it up on price chart and it seemed to be fair. It was a downhill domination, yeah. which is like not a game you would think I would get, but I played it at John's and it was really cool. Yeah, it is. It's just, yeah, just a fun and fast moving, just like you, you're, they just like drop you on the top of a mountain with a bike and you go down the mountain on that bike. Yeah, it's like, it's and like it's, road rash in a way. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a really simple concept executed pretty darn well. Yeah. And you, two more says it's fast and fun and it is. Yeah, it's a, it's it a very crisp looking game too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just one of those, just like one of those PS2 games doing what the PS2 does best. Just like <laughs> run along, like really fast, really smooth, 60 FPS. Um, there was, uh, 
Uh, there was a $5 super chat uh, from local s'mores pop tart. <laughs> I believe that's a name we've. I believe that's a name we've seen before because I remember being entertained by. I, it's, yeah, I. I it sounds, by a, it a username easy. that is much like that. Was that was probably exactly like that. Um, in the past, saying I uh, got Princess Peach Showtime on one monitor and the stream on the other with some tea and a banana bread candle burning. <laughs> Very cozy way. <laughs> a to banana end the week. banana bread candle. That sounds great. That sounds super great. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not really a candle person, but that sounds like a candle I would enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Simiseer Official uh, says, uh, here's all the games my teacher worked on as an animator. Puppeteer, Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, Resistance, Burning Skies, and Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception. Wow. Quite an illustrious uh, list of PlayStation stuff. That's that's very very impressive. Oh, see here we've got Q Creation saying Puppeteer must be a little Big Planet clone, and it's not. We were just talking about that. We we think though, but that I think that people thought it. Was. it right, we think that perception could be. I mean, maybe you... why it it just was a little bit ignored. It's like it's like little Big Planet, but it's just like one set campaign. Oh with no creation tool or user generated content, but it's not. I mean, it, it, it definitely, I can understand how it has that perception, but yeah. and each each set piece is like so intricately designed because it's got like the way that, you know, because it's the, the camera, of course, does not move. It's a stage, but they've got all of these things that have to like kind of mechanically move in and out. And, you know, so just like every inch of the game is so curated, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was uh, um, uh, was a uh, uh, notification from Joshua Eichert, uh, having been a member for 14 months in a row. Thank you. Saying, uh, playing some FF14 in Walker with the stream on my <laughs> phone since we're all sharing what we're doing tonight. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Um, well, well, thank you. By the way, speaking of Final Fantasy fourteen, I know, I know, I brought fourteen up earlier in the stream. Um, I, I gotta ask, it, it, you know, for maybe people who keep their ear to the ground a little more than me. I looked around; I could not find any evidence of this. But it is like, so I, I'm I'm doing a review of the Xbox version of Final Fantasy fourteen for Digital Foundry. Um, and like it, it is unbelievable to me that the language filter issue is like still there. Like I heard people complain about it early on and I, I didn't look at it that closely and I didn't, but then like I started recording more like actual playing together with people stuff uh, over the weekend. And I'm just like suddenly like, oh my gosh, like whoops. Uh, this is this is disastrous. Like, like has, has there been any not like some people are saying like, oh, it's a bug, but it's like, is it? Like, if it, I mean, it's been we're coming on two months since the beta went up. Like, has there been any acknowledgement from Microsoft or Square Enix about this? Well. You know what I'm kind of thinking? Like, this might be the... Like, okay, so Joshua Eicher is saying free company is a banned term somehow. So so my understanding is, like, that whole, like, free company fiasco, I think, was an issue because someone used the Xbox level, like, chat stuff. I mean, I, I don't know that much about, like, all the systems that surround online play on modern consoles because... Like, I don't really play a lot of online games very often outside Final Fantasy XIV. Um, and um, that, I think that was an issue because, like, th that sound that was, like, targeted as sounding like solicitation for something free, right? Um, but I'm talking about actually in the game. <laughs> like, uh, apparently there is no way to disable this. The game has its own language filtering settings. But even if you have that, like, you know, set to allow everything and whatever, 
no matter what you set your Xbox system settings to, as far as I know, it sounds like there is no way around this. Where you, Jeez. you cannot, it, it, it's not just saying oh. profanity, it is profanity contained within like normal words. <laughs> within normal words or adjacent letters across a word. So any string of characters, like you cannot, if you say the word something, you get S O question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, I N G. Because it has the word meth in it. Like you cannot say the word something without it being censored. Now my friend was playing on PlayStation five and he could, he could see what I said on Xbox. Like, so the words still go through, but you can't see what you wrote and you can't see what others write because any string, any string of forbidden letters, even with spaces between them or periods and spaces, like gets blocked. It's un, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Like, um, like, like it seriously impairs your ability to like comprehend like what, I mean, it's an online game. Like you cannot fully comprehend what people are trying to tell you about. And what's funny about it is like, I got to learn some new bad words that I didn't know were <laughs> bad words or, or, uh, you know, modern slang because, uh, because I'm like, okay, I know what letters were censored. Why is this censored? I have to look it up. Um, yeah. Like, and so ironically, you have to actually be actively thinking about the bad words to decipher what people are even saying in the game. <laughs> so it has the opposite effect. You're more exposed to the bad words in this situation. It's silly. It's really silly. I, like, uh, is it, um, how, do, how do you even do anything about that? I mean, is, it's so like what I'm wondering level. is like, is this... I'm actually wondering if this is maybe like the reason that it took so long for an Xbox version to happen because on the surface, it's ridiculous that there hasn't been an Xbox yeah. version because the like, like, I, you know, I, kudos to Square Enix. They have from the beginning from Final Fantasy 11 and um, Dragon Quest 10 and 14, like it's always been all about all platforms play together on the same service. Oh, hello, Sadie. Oh, hello. <laughs> is this is this an exciting conversation for you? Off, off the screen now, unfortunately. Yeah, like just off the screen. Yeah, she had to say hi. She, she, she saw me getting very animated. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, cool decision. Ah, uh, yeah, good vibe. Clay says I was today years old when I realized meth was in the word something, right? Yeah. Like, Square Xbox is drawing attention to this. <laughs> They're trying to, to distract from it. It makes no sense. Anyway, um, yeah, it's it's really absurd. But I'm like, I'm wondering if this is just like some burnt-in aspect of like how Xbox online works and like maybe that is why it took so long for an Xbox version to come along because you know it's kind of funny because Final Fantasy but 11 like had an Xbox 360 so version they would try to like have fixed it by the time it came out right I know like like, like no, maybe this like, was like the hang up for so long and then it's just like well you know here's our compromise and if it is a compromise it's a bad one because it, now it makes it difficult to play in a game with other humans, you know, through te via text, you know? Yeah. It's it's really, really bad. And the fact, you know, that's why I was asking, like, has anyone seen any acknowledgement from Square Enix or Microsoft about this? Because this is it's been almost two months since the beta. I mean, the beta was up for a month and now we're, the game has been released for like three weeks like yeah. the xbox version has been officially released for like three weeks so uh no dingus lord there's no voice chat i mean you could i suppose if you're playing with it xbox friends i guess you could do you know xbox voice chat or you know obviously there's people who play I'm there's just no um, option for that play with discord 
But I, I mean, I, I, I actually really enjoy enjoy this. It's just text chat, yeah. you know, because I, I don't, I don't want to hear other humans. I want to hear randos when I'm playing games. You know, I don't, I don't talk to randos via voice. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, it's bizarre. Um, it's it's really really strange, and the Xbox, the Xbox Series S version. I wish it was better. The Series X version, good. I mean, the low frame rate compensation VRR makes a massive difference too if you want to play in 4K. Uh, something that I don't really consider viable on PS5. So I mean, there's positive points to it, but like when you get down to it, like an issue like that, like until something like that is resolved, it's like, how do you even recommend this version of the game? Because that's just like so fundamental to playing it. You know, like, but it's just like blocking out words or making obscuring words. And you have to, like, take time to think about what they're saying. It's it's really, really crazy. FF1 was the one more thing of the 360. Was it? I don't I don't think it was because uh, I was looking at the because I'm going to use some clips from the 2006 press conference. Yeah, and I think that was where the uh, FF11 was revealed, and they also showed that tech demo that ultimately became Final Fantasy XIV. I'm going to bring that up in the beginning of this video, uh, and you know, and then it's taken this many years. I mean, it's so crazy is that was shown two thousand two thousand six, and now Xbox finally has Final Fantasy XIV, which is nice, but that's is that when it was pretty, revealed? Not really. Um, so in 2006, uh, Square Enix was like, um, th they had never released a game on Xbox, on an Xbox system before. And they were kind of making a big deal out, you know, because remember, they were, uh, Xbox was trying to get these JRPGs. They were like really trying to yeah. increase Japanese appeal. And so Square Enix was like all on board with the 360. You know, the 360s to this day has a number of really interesting exclusive JRPGs. Yeah. And uh, amazingly enough, like Final Fantasy XI, of course it was on PS2, but it came to Xbox 360 and not PS3. Um, and I've always regretted that I never had a chance to even try the Xbox version of XI. Um, but yeah, so they revealed a tech demo. Like, because, you know, the new generation was new. PS3 wasn't even out yet. And this was like an Xbox 360 tech demo that um, Square Enix had made. And it was clearly in the style of Final Fantasy XI. Uh, you know, very similar style of character model and character design and world design. So it was like, this is like the beginning of their next MMO. Mm -hmm. And, you know, four years later, 1.0 came out. So it was, and the location showed in that tech demo uh, came to the game in the third expansion. Or, or you know, a, 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 a version that used the location as its basis. Um, you know, it's obviously quite different looking and, and redesigned in terms of layout. But, um. Oh, hey, Monkey Man says, hey, I'm currently playing FF11 on PC as we speak. Still has a large community here. Yeah, I think most people think, like, Final Fantasy XI is a was. No, yeah. it's it's still up there. You, you you cannot play it on PS2 and Xbox 360 anymore. But the PC version is still alive and well. I mean, there's there's people who, you know, wouldn't trade that experience of XI for anything. And I, I get it. Um, it's, you know, it's admittedly a tough game to make the time for today, although they've, they've done a lot of, uh, you know, niceties that, that make it a little more respectful of your time, I would say. Um, you know, there, there's still part of me that wants to do the Seekers of Adeline story. That's the only expansion I never played. And then I guess there's a, a, a big storyline after that, too. Um, but anyway. You know, um, it's, it's really a shame that that issue is in the Xbox version, because otherwise I'm excited, like, hey, yay, more people can play the game. But 
man, if they can't fix that, it's like, oof. It's, it's, but yeah, it, it, you know, it's it's just it's it's it was such a long. It's an interesting story, I think. You know, if you consider the the full history of how long it took the game to come to Xbox, right? But it's you know maybe a little bit of a mixed bag in the end. Did you forget you sent us off in the first place? I'm just like, there's a lot of cutscenes in this. I'm just I'm skipping them just for the sake of. They were clearly important. Atari Fun says, is 11 the one that works on Dreamcast and GameCube? You must be thinking of Fantasy Star Online. There is no... The only console versions of 11 are... Um, are uh, PS2 and Xbox 360, which you can't play anymore. But you can play it on PC? I think there is a few Super Chats. I think there's three. Um. Oh yeah. I, I got. I got. I. I got on a Final Fantasy ramble. You know how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, um. Uh. There was. Oh, a notification that James Boone has been a member for 32 months in a row. Thank you. Saying was up in Cincy last week to view the eclipse with some friends. Amazing experience. Hope oh, you got yeah. to see it with your family, Corey. Uh. I did not. You were in the air, plane. weren't you? What's that? You were in the air, yeah. Yeah, I was. I, I, I looked out the window and it got a little gray, but I was flying to Chicago from Milwaukee. Yeah. So I, no. I was, I was, I was in the Milwaukee airport uh, while it was going on. I mean, I, I didn't. Uh, I, I, I really am sad, kind of sad about it though. Um, I've just, I've seen, you know, like a lot of people talking about how it is. Um, I would just like blew them away like uh, people saying oh I didn't think I was gonna be impressed and then it really impressed me and stuff like that and it, ma it made me kind of sad um, to uh, not be able to experience it but you know there's nothing I can I, nothing I can do about it I, I didn't real is Cincinnati I, was it actually in the path of totality? Um, no no it, it was like just Close outside though. of it um, Close yeah. but you know my, my wife and kids got to go and watch it um, I saw some pictures, and uh, seemed seemed pretty amazing. Uh, but yeah, I, I was definitely pretty sad, like after the fact. What can, what, um, what can you do though? There's nothing. There's, I don't have any. Nothing I can do about it. There, there was also um, a two dollar super chat from Pre Pretty Chill Phil. Oh, that's, that's a great name. <laughs> Saying, uh, remember when Sony made video games? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's really been on my mind lately how, like, the only aspect of their heritage that, like, really exists currently uh, in, like, you know, any sort of PlayStation games that are being actively marketed is like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And that's not even from Sony, right? Like, obviously, you know, that is something that 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 Final Fantasy VII part of their heritage has, you know, done, uh, you know, I, 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 think, I think that's where it started for a lot of people, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. And, and Sony has, ever since... The PlayStation 4, I'd say it's dwindled more and more where they just, they, they just don't, I mean, they, they, they've got such a huge audience, so it doesn't really matter, but they just don't want to encourage really like, they, they just don't, they don't continue to foster the nostalgia or, uh, the audience that that brought them to where they are now, you know, and, and the closure of J Japan Studio. Really, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I like Naughty Dog games and stuff, but it, it's kind of ridiculous that, like, l like literally every Sony game is like cinematic masterpiece, epic open world cinematic masterpiece. Or, you know, sad dad, open world, epic masterpiece. <laughs> like, like, there's just like no middle ground, you know? Like, where's the games like this, you know? Yeah. Like, it's, 
it it makes me it makes me sad and i feel like you know, neither Sony or, I mean, maybe it doesn't matter for them, but like neither Sony or Xbox are really fostering the audience that brought, you know, brought them success originally. You know, Xbox was doing a pretty good job of it with the backwards compatibility program, but then they, you know, they retired that. Yeah. Um, you know, of course you can still do it. That's still the main thing I do with my Xbox systems is like play Xbox 360 games, you know? Yeah. And like, um, that's like Nintendo's main thing, I feel like. It is. It is. Like, Nintendo. Like, like Nintendo. You know, they can still do new things like Splatoon, yeah. you know? Uh, but they. You know, I'm not saying like no new concepts or anything, but I feel like Sony no. has really pigeonholed themselves into the, you know. Yeah, I agree there. The, tr the triple A, like ultra triple a like cinematic masterpiece situation like nothing that's not the biggest game if it's not the biggest game ever it's just not good enough you know yeah. i mean i know they just did something like that uh that team ninja game that i can't even remember what the name is and like stellar blade is maybe you know a little you know i mean that's things like that like you know, it, it is nice to see that variety, although they, it's not yeah. like they're Sony first party, you know? Right. But it, they are exclusive, so it is it is nice to see that kind of stuff, I suppose, you know? So, you know Stellar Blade might be cool. I don't know. I tried the demo a little bit, but, you know, I... I, I you know, I, I respect the type of game it's trying to be, I suppose, but... Yeah. It, it feels a little... little feels modern and a throwback at the same time, which is good. Yeah. Um... Shadowbass says they wanted to gain majority market share, and now they have. Time to cash in and ride it out. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's just, it, it just makes me sad that, you know, it's only, only Nintendo that, like, really understands, like, where they came from, you know? Right. Like, and Nintendo, like, they've got, they've got a new audience, a young audience, and old audience. And... You know, there's there's a reason I think that Nintendo fans are so loyal. And they've always they've always done a good job at capitalizing on that. Yeah. And you know, I mean, not to say Nintendo is perfect by any means, but you know, they you know, I, I, they're certainly doing a better job of doing more of the things that you went to them for in the first place than Sony and Xbox. For sure. I mean, I think PS5 is a very good system, but almost by accident. I feel like 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 Sony's vision for the system is like like almost sabotaging it and just <laughs> and yet it's still a good system. <laughs> but they're making so many mistakes. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, Cheese Meister has, says it says it very well here. PS5 only wins that market segment by default. Like they yeah. have ended up in a situation where they win by default. Yeah. At least that market segment. Not to say they won one because I mean, you know, people are always like ignoring Nintendo, and Nintendo does you know fantastically. But it's, it's yeah, they won it by 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 default. Like it's not really because of anything spectacular they have been doing other than making a a competent box and an inconvenient form factor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the, the hardware design, I think, is very good. The physical design is, you know, obnoxious. Well, it's going to be interesting if this, I mean, what this uh, pro system is going to be like. Because, I, like, I don't think that anybody cares. I think it's basically it's. I mean, I sort of care, but like it like could certainly be a lot more exciting. Uh, I know I'm going to get one, but yeah, but because I, you know, I think it's useful to have for the things that we do, right? Yeah. But like, I'll I'll freely admit what we I mean, know about it sounds, it anyway. sounds like it makes even less sense right. than PS4 Pro did for most people, you know. Yeah. But, uh. You know, I mean, it, it, it's it's basically going to be PS5 
but with maybe a little better ray tracing and Sony's version of DLSS. Is basically what's going on. Which, by the way, the Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail benchmark came out today. You can you can finally see DLSS actually working in Final Fantasy uh, fourteen. That, that that's a game that has had nothing but FXAA all these years. Which is like super outdated anti-aliasing. Atari Fest says, are old gamers too easy to impress with graphics? But young gamers are too easy to impress with bad graphics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Roblox is like a phenomenon. It's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. But it's that. I mean, not, not, not that I'm, not that I'm saying that's a bad that. thing, by the way. I mean, it's, there's just a lot of things to, to play, it's, you know? It's cool that it's cool that young gamers like are are into those very simple styles yeah you know i mean minecraft i, I mean I, I i like the look of minecraft I, I don't like the look of roblox so much but i mean you know it's i mean I, i'm still i'm still happy to see simple stuff so, you know. are we gonna po officially in a post graphics uh i mean i guess that depends on who you <laughs> ask but uh are, are we going back to text adventures <laughs> Um, anyway, I, I, I need to, I need to move along here. Uh, sorry, I got behind and I saw someone in the chat. I apologize. Uh, it's tough to keep up. Someone said, uh, uh, where, where was it? Uh, oh yeah. Taylor Keating said, Hey, try and Corey, I saw you at Midwest gaming classic. Did you pick up anything on Sunday? Uh, I, 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 I did. I'm trying to get back to uh, talking about my pickups. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really quick, uh, Jose Marcello uh, Al 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 Alcaris is asking uh, what, the, what the negatives are with this game. Um, I don't like the fact that Roll is on the L2 trigger. Oh, I mean, that's that's yeah, I mean, there's, there's maybe a lot of cutscenes. That. But you, which, but if you were like, I mean, maybe that makes it a little, little tough it's, for it's a stream. Maybe a little much for this type of game. But if you were, I mean, imagine playing this on your, like, just chilling with this game for a weekend on your projector. Like, this is, this is, you are here for the theatrical presentation, right? Yeah, it's but here, and, like, and, that, and that's fine. But I feel like there's probably still a bit too much. Maybe. But I do think it's part I, of what I shouldn't the game have is. to skip cutscenes twice in between <laughs> levels. I shouldn't have I to skip twice. I think that was a common, a common, a common issue uh, yeah. in this generation. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean that. Oh, Bolt. Uh, 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 I, I can't. I can't. I, I. I can't say. I can't say this full name. I don't know how. To, I don't know how to make those work. Bolt, 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 Oni, and Max, whatever your name is, saying try it in 3D. It's awesome. I forgot this supports 3D. I need to, oh, I, I think I finally figured out how to make 3D work on my projector. I just need to bring my PS3 and actually do it sometime. Uh, yeah, this would be a good one to try in 3D, I bet. I want I want roll on R2 and guard on R1. Not on I would be okay with having L be the uh click. Okay. Um Was was that are we caught up or is there No 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 not yet. I'm I'm getting back to it. Uh uh, I, I I love the username, if lasers, uh, who had a ten dollars super chat. Thank you. Saying, uh, "Great seeing you guys at MGC. Did you get a chance to check out the World of Nintendo exhibit? Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we we talked to him for a while. I mean, we talked to him for a while last year. Funny right. story. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, when he did his Kickstarter for his second book, um, the the photograph uh, used for his avatar on Kickstarter is like you, is me talking to him. Like, like you can't 
you wouldn't know it was me if you didn't know. Like, it's like me turned at the counter talking to him from last year's Midwest Gaming Classic. Um, yeah, that, um, let's see, don't, is the barber, is the, whoops. Um, knocking stuff off here. Where is the book? Let me see if I've got the, because I bought it when I got, because last year his book was not, it was like just a few weeks out from right. being ready. Um, so unfortunately he couldn't sell them there. Hopefully he had some to sell here. I believe he did. Uh, let, let me see if it's on my shelf. I, I'm not sure where I put it. Oh, here it is. Now aim this time. Yeah, this is the world of Nintendo, uh, a visual history, uh, volume one, uh, 1987 through 1990. And he's working on a second volume. And this is like so cool. I mean, I know you can't really see it, but it's just, it's got like an insane number of photos of like all of like Nintendo's retail history. Yeah. From, uh, you know, from, from that period. And it's like displays of trade shows and stores and all of the uh, memorabilia and uh uh, signage that they had, like displaying all of all of these uh, games and uh, just just lots of unique things, kiosks, uh, all sorts of, of advertisements. It just is is an awesome, awesome, awesome book. Um, you know, I, I I should buy more books like this um, than I do. Uh, but th this, uh, you know, he was showing it to me when we were there last year. He had, you know, and, and it, you know it wasn't Not paying attention. the final version, but it was close. And uh, I was just like, I have to have this. This is this is so cool. It's really, really great. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, if Laser says he did sell me on this book, too. It's great, though. It is. It's uh, he should be really proud of it. Um, uh, nice guy. Uh, yeah, let me put this back. That thing looks like the, Bravo, and I the planet I. thing from Star Ocean 2. Uh, anyway, um, there was a $5 super chat from Mega X6. Thank you. Dang. Uh, saying, Thank you. I was looking for a game to match my mood last week. Landed on Yakuza Kiwami. Great game. Except the chase. Ended up buying Kiwami 2, 3, 4, and 5. <laughs> Oh, now you're you're getting in deep now. Oh man, oh man. I, I'm wondering what that mood was that made you want to play Japanese gangsters. <laughs> um, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Is it just because I'm talking um, so loud tonight? Uh, anyway, uh, there was also a notification that T Soul has been a member for 15 months in a row. Thank you. T Soul. Um, Thank you. Saying, uh, welcome back. Have either of you gotten a chance to use the PlayStation Portal yet? I'm wondering if the AirPlay has gotten any better since Vita. I mean, I believe you can probably get an idea of how well it works if you just like use the remote play on like your your on computer your yeah on your phone uh i mean that's what a lot of people said just get like one of those backbone things yeah i mean it's it sounds like a pretty limited device i mean if <laughs> i i i it, cracked it, i still crack up about the fact that uh when uh wolf den did a like a, a review of it and he's like looking at the options he's like why does it have an airplane mode <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> that is really funny. That is really funny. <laughs> like, why is that even an option? Yeah. That's really funny. Like, I wonder if it just, like, has to be there for, like, right. yeah. legal reasons. <laughs> but that's, that is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> Um, wow. The princess is being <laughs> yeah. Here. But yeah, I mean, it's just, I, that is just a device that I don't think 
either of us care about at all. Like, I'm not not to say it's like a, you know, not a bad. I mean, for the people who want to use it, like, that's fine. Yeah. It just, it just does not interest me at all. Like, I, I hear like as far as LCD screens go, the, the screen's pretty good. But I also hear, you know, it still has issues with like, you know, even frame delivery and stuff like that, which, you know, most streaming stuff does have trouble with that. Yeah. Um, you know what they should do? Although, to make it like even more like, like it is to stream anything these days, uh, they should make it so that you have to watch commercials throughout it, throughout playing games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have you noticed that like every single streaming service has like commercials now? I was just trying well, to. Well, yeah, a like you, you you can pay Amazon like an extra fee to not to not have to not have ads. Yeah. Like okay, because I mean, obviously they just need like a whole bunch more money. Yeah. I don't know. It's just I was laughing about it because. Like everything has says commercials now. Uh, there was a two dollar super chat from Warren Hokey. Thank you. Thank you. Saying best Final Fantasy for pe for people who never played one. Ooh. What is what? Best Final Fantasy for people who never played one. At best, she's a lady. Um. Probably ten. I'd say. <laughs> huh? Probably, I would say like probably ten or maybe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, most people love 10. Like, it's, it's relatively low on my list. I mean, I like it, but it's got a really good battle system. You know, people do uh, really like its battle system, but its battle system is also not really like any other Final Fantasy game, so it's not really that representative of the series. I, I, I feel like 4 might be the safest bet. You know, in, unless you're like yeah. the kind of person that just like if, if you don't Maybe like random PSP encounters, version. like if like random encounters is just like a game design no no for you, I I I I I think random encounters have their place. I, I like random encounters. I think they are a good way to represent the yeah. trials and tribulations that you would come across going from point A to point B. I I do not mind random encounters. Um uh, and that's something that you will see in Final Fantasy up up through 10. Yeah. Um, so I think 4 is a very safe bet because it's got, you know, this really great snappily paced story, like really like no fat to it. Yeah. Um, it's got a very simple party setup where... Yeah, I mean... Uh, at least... The, the, so certain first? later versions, I don't know entirely exactly which one's off the top of my head. Certain later versions do let you choose your party at the end, which I don't really love. Um, uh, but for the most part, the party members come and go. You don't like choose like who's in your party. And I like that because they all have very specific roles. And you kind of, the fact that they're constantly changing up who is in the party as the story moves along, that kind of forces you to learn to work with like different party setups. Uh, so it's, it's 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 quite straightforward in a good way. Um, so I really like four. Uh, six would also be. A, I think a strong recommendation if you want like a little more customization um, because it's it's like kind of got characters who all have their unique abilities, but you choose the party a lot throughout the game. You can also, uh, you know, choose what spells different characters will learn and stuff like that. And then if you don't really care about, like if you just want like pure RPG goodness, then... Um, Five is great like not really so much story but it's like it's the gameplay of Final Fantasy you know the job system is the basis for a lot of other things in the series uh, and a lot of the spinoff games like kind of utilize uh, like Final Fantasy Cactus utilize the Final Fantasy 5 job system a lot the Last of Us says uh, 4 on PSP is a pretty good version better than the Pixel Remaster in my opinion 4 on PSP is a very a very easy thing to recommend, I think. 
You know, it might look a little mobile-y. Uh, at the time, it didn't look that way, but the style, like, it does, it looks better than mobile, I'd say. But, like, you look at it and you're like, oh, it doesn't look quite like I remember. Um, but I, I do think 4 on PSP is very easy to recommend. Um, uh, you know, no promises on when it'll happen, but, you know, <laughs> You know, we we, we kind of want to do like a Final Fantasy 4, 5, and 6 video uh, sometime. Um, but anyway, I, I think those are all easy to recommend. I mean, I think 7 is also top-notch if if you have no problem with like, you know, PlayStation, very early PlayStation uh, quality graphics. Um, 7 is, is easy to recommend. And same with 9. I mean, not, 9 is... Oh. Nine is similar to oh yeah that looks very painful. Nine nine is similar to four, and that you know you've got a lot of de clearly defined party roles and things like that. Um, you know that's that's the best looking PS One Final Fantasy. Those are all very good to start with. Ten is not a bad recommendation for starting, but I I like the Super Nintendo and PS One era more. So anyway, the, 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 that, that's that's a complicated uh, question, but hopefully I gave you some <laughs> some pointers to think about. Um, or the ten dollars super chat from Robert Hernandez. Thank you. How so do I the younger that? generation? The younger generation is taking advantage of something Gen X took for granted: gameplay over graphics. We couldn't have awesome graphics back then, which led to FOMO. In hindsight, we had it real good. I mean, you know, I, I I do think there 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 is something to be said for you know a game achieving technical excellence is is also often a marker of it being a good game. And I think, but I think the 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 thing you know to point out is like it's not like you know oh back then we had bad graphics and we liked it. I don't think that's so much the case. Uh, you know, games that uh, that strove for excellence on NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, those games still play and look great today. You know, something that that looked good at its time because it, you know, had a really uh, distinctive style and pulled it off with uh, finesse in a way that supported the gameplay. You know, something like that is always going to look good and play good. I, you know, if it, if it was something that looked bad at the time, it's not going to start to look good. Um, so, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, like, the, the interplay between graphics and gameplay can be can be complicated. Um, you know, I mean, if, if graphics truly didn't matter... Oh, come on. Like, the way I always like to think about it is, like, you know, people who say like, "Oh, I don't care about graphics." Well, if if every character or if every game was just like, you know, boxes moving about, like you know, just a, a polygon grid, it looks like shining. <laughs> like the gameplay is still all there, but like it, it has no no personality, no style, no nothing that makes it look any different. Or feel any different from any other game, like you know, you can't tell me you would enjoy games all the same if that's all they were. But uh, I, I do, you know, I do appreciate that. Uh, that Ugh, certain, it's like, it's like, it's like certain simple styles, uh, some body horror aspects of this, <laughs> right? Like cutting yeah. his teeth, like cutting his teeth. <laughs> But Stefan says it's just that the ceiling of good graphics is way higher today than it was back in the day. When we had when when it was a one-story building, the Super Nintendo era is now the highest buildings in the world. Well, I think a good way to look at it is look at Final Fantasy VII Remake Trilogy, right? Like Final Fantasy VII was a game that could be created up to the production standards of the time and be considered 
you know, high high standard graphics in 97, uh, in some aspects at least. Uh, you you cannot make a game of the scope of Final Fantasy VII mm. with the expectations of the pre- of today's AAA presentation. You just can't make that one game. It wouldn't it wouldn't be cost effective or or you know <laughs> it, it would take too many years. You know it's, this is going to be like a you know the, before, by the time it's all said and done. You know by the t- from when they started making remake. I mean the whole thing's going to be like twelve years from beginning production of remake right by the time the third game comes out and i'm not criticizing it being three games but like the standards of what a game has to be or a final fantasy game has to be or at least what they think a final fantasy game has to be um yeah and it you know that it doesn't it, need to be that it doesn't need to be that like I, I've said time and time again, like I would love more remakes of the, like I think any Super Famicom RPG could be remade with the graphics of Trials of Mana. Yeah. The Trials yeah. of Mana remake. I, agree. I love how that game looks. And is it on the level of Final Fantasy VII Remake? No, but it's beautiful. And it reimagines the game in a way that is attractive and fun. And I think any, any, Super Nintendo Final Fantasy, or arguably even PlayStation Final Fantasy, could be remade with that presentation, and it would be, I, I think it would still be very effective. It doesn't have to be what Remake and Rebirth are. Yeah. But, but you know, I also think about how the fact that, like, I, I, I saw, I used to see RPGs as being a very sort of abstract genre where the games were able to be bigger because so much about them was simpler from the presentation side. You know, you had weird things like, you know, the characters like go into the party leader and out of the party leader at the beginning and end of conversation scenes, right? Um, You, uh, you know, have the battles take place on separate screens. You know, you have characters do attacks that don't directly connect with the enemies in the you know in like mm-hmm. the in the sprite based eras. You have, um, you have, uh, uh, you know, enemies that don't animate in the sprite based era. You know, it's all a very representative. If they had intricately animated all of that stuff out, the games couldn't have as large of a scope as they have. And that, that I always saw that as it, it, back in the day when I was first getting into RPGs, I saw that as like a core tenant of RPGs. I saw that as like the, these games represent the action rather than showing us directly like what is happening. And and the the advantage of that is the game can be bigger. But then you have some you know well now now Final Fantasy VII has to tell the same story or a a similar version of that story where every move, every battle, every action is like this like big epic deal, right? Where it all looks very, you know, realistic and smoothly animated and and all that, you know? And you you just, Final Fantasy VII is too big of a game to do that. That's why it has to be three parts. Um, Yeah. So... It's uh, but it does seem like this last one's gonna be quicker. But I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see what they do with this next. I I, I just find that new RPGs have like just they, they have a trouble matching the scope of of Super Nintendo and PlayStation RPGs. Like those, those yeah, games just have like yeah, I, I mean so much happen. Yeah, and like just so much happens over the course of those games, and like. It feels like it feels like it takes longer and longer and longer to get to like the big climactic moments. I mean, there's 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 like a climactic moment like every couple of hours in you know the the 16 and 32 bit Final Fantasies. You know, there's yeah. just like something that's like, oh my gosh, like this is really exciting. Like, what's going to happen next? You know, mm-hmm. I feel like the I feel like the 14 expansions are like the only things that kind of come close to that like you know just in the way they're always just like pushing the the story forward you know huh 
But I mean, is that just because they are the kind of game that they are? Like, they're, like, uh... They just, like, they're expansions for, like, a main game. So they can constantly, like, try to outdo themselves. And and they're, like, just working with that within that same engine or whatever. So it becomes... Right! So, it, it, so that's true. Like, like I was saying, like, it... Like, you know... I, like I said, like I used to think, like by necessity, like an RPG has to be sort of a representative concept, right? Mm -hmm. And and you know the the simpler animations and more simply represented battles were in service of making the game more expansive, just 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 having more more to it. You know, it's a more expansive epic game. And they're able to do that by keeping certain aspects of the visuals relatively simple, right? Um, and as an MMO that, you know, that it has to be able to release new content on a certain schedule. Yeah, sure. There are like lots of like, especially animation and visual compromises in Final Fantasy XIV. You know, it's, it, it is a visually simple game to some extent. And I, you're, you may be right. Like that is part of what allows them to create um, a lot of, content that you know moves the story forward quickly and in exciting ways perhaps is because of those visual like limitations working in that same engine, engine. Oh, yeah so. yeah yeah you may be you very well may be right but that could be part of why i feel like it 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 captures that old school final fantasy feel of the storytelling in a way that just like nothing has in a long time no. But, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, that's, that's, that's a ramble. I'm sorry. Everyone's super chats are falling <laughs> behind. <laughs> um, there was a uh, $5 super chat from EB chill too. Thank you. Oh, Eric Benoit saying, uh, this and 3d dot 3d dot game heroes would be perfect. Switch two games. If uh, I had my way, Corey, are we on for Yakuza on Tuesday? Um, it's I I want to be. Um, I it depends on my situation. Um, I have a live event coming up on at the end of the week for for work that like everybody is kind of like all hands on right now, and uh, if everything is able to be is is like wrapped up and ready to go in time. And I don't have to do anything, then sure. I mean, I think, uh, but back to the 3D dot game heroes and this. I mean, they would be perfect Switch One games. I mean, you know, we've seen that Switch is perfectly capable of of better than uh, PS3 and better than 360 graphics. Um, you know, I, I I think it's insane that 3D dot game heroes hasn't come back because I think I think it would find so much more of an audience today than it did back then. It's, yeah, it's insane to me that that is not. I, I still gotta play them, but I mean, it's oh, it's such an interesting great. thing because now that like from software is so much better, yeah. more well known. It's, Although I'm not sure if they were the main developer on it, but uh, uh there because there was like another developer involved. I, I'm not really sure how development duties were divided. Um, by the way, I, I saw that. Uh, the EB Chill and uh, Kiriyama were talking about uh, Blue Stinger. You know, I, I almost Blue almost Stinger. bought a copy of Blue Stinger at Midwest Gaming Classic, a, a Japanese copy. I, I used to have an American copy, and I I didn't like it. I sold it. Um, I mean, I wanted I to like it, you gave it to me. but man, it was an annoying game to play. Um, and I think part of that was down to the perspective. You know, one of the interesting things about the Japanese version is that um, it has these camera angles, like these preset camera angles that were done by like some like Japanese director or cinematographer or something like that. And uh, the American version uh, has uh, the camera like follows you from behind it. It's really awkward and it doesn't feel right. Um, so I'm really interested in playing the Japanese version. I love Ill Bleed, um, you know, which is from the same developer. Uh, so I, I, I love just, I love weird Dreamcast games. Like that's, 
Like the weirder a Dreamcast game is, the more interested <laughs> I am in it. Like something, something about the Dreamcast is just defined by weird to me. Yeah. I really want we my Dreamcast games weird. <laughs> um, but the, the copy I saw, like it was a good, it was a really cheap price, but it, the manual had some, it was fairly water damaged and I'm just like, eh. <laughs> but that is something I have wanted to buy for a while. Um, anyway, um, there was five dollars super chat from RC. Thank you. Hey. Saying love this game refurbished a PS3 specifically for this and 3D dot game heroes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are yeah, they? Man. What are the? I guess Metal Gear Solid Four. But I, what are the other like big heavy hitters that? Folklore is up there, probably at that point. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know how big of a heavy hitter that's considered. But it's an expensive game now. I, I guess I got it at the right time then. Yeah. Because I was very concerned about PS3 prices. What are the, some of the other, like, there, I, let, let, let me look on my backloggery, and I'll just, I'll just go down the list of games that, to my knowledge, are still locked to PS3. Yeah. Uh, 3D Dot Game Heroes, Africa, um, let's see. Infamous one and two. Well, while you're looking at that, huh? there was five dollars from uh, Junko nine nine eighty eight. Thank, Thank you. you. Saying uh, you guys worried about disc rot? Uh, those PS one discs are getting up there in age. Uh, it, yeah. I mean, as I long as you keep your stuff in good conditions, it seems to be such a, a rare issue. I mean, the only things I've ever really heard of it happening on are like PC Engine CD and TurboGrafx CD. And I, 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 I have only found one disc in my entire collection that has disc rot. And I say collection. I don't actually consider it part of my collection because it was just a loose disc that happened to come with my uh, PC Engine CD, and yeah. you know it was it was already in poor condition. Uh, and then if you hold it up to the light, you can see the light shining through it. So it's disc rot. Um, but I, I don't think it's a super big concern. I mean, I think the you know uh, I think the condition of, of the lasers and other mechanisms is, is a bigger concern. Um, I mean, it will be a concern someday. I mean, you know, yeah. as Artemio said in Analog Frontiers Part 3, you know, everything will eventually decay. Yeah. There's, there's no way around that. But whether it's a concern in our lifetimes or, you know, or not, I don't, I, 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 I don't know. Right. Uh, but gotta discs, that they're not, but chances are. Discs are... You know, the the, the, the technology's got better and better and better over the years uh, from making them, you know, and I think, you know, some of that early early PC Engine stuff, I mean, I want to say PC Engine was like the first CD-ROM stuff ever, basically. So, like, the the, the chemistry used in making them just was not as good as, as what came later, I would yeah. say. And you just got to... You know, I, I think, I think Blu-rays and stuff like that, we just, like, don't have to ever worry Again, the mechanisms uh, more than anything, as far as I know. I guess the important thing is, you know, play, play, play them while you can. Yeah, exactly. Right? And then you can't, you can't when get the time comes like, that well, you can, you know, I, 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 then we'll, you know, you'll, you'll have to just fall back on away. emulation, and that's, you know, that's that's how it is. Yeah, but we can enjoy it while we can. Exactly. Uh, there was also a five dollars super chat from Tinchi Ruya. Oh. Thank you. Saying I think HD 2D is fine for remakes of Super Nintendo RPGs. I would love to see Chrono Trigger in that stuff. Yeah, I think that's fine too. I think you know I, I, th those are different paths that I think are both very valid. HD 2D, the Trials of Mana style. Uh, I think both of those would work great. Um, you know. Uh, I, I think the HD 2D style could still use a little bit of refinement. Maybe that'll come when, you know, the original Switch doesn't have to be targeted anymore. Uh, you know, I, I really like the look, but, you know, and it would certainly be nice, like, for it to be, like, 
you know, 60 frames a second for smoother scrolling. You know, yeah. it, we, we have seen that, of course, with, you know, some well, of the releases that have come to like PlayStation and stuff. But, so cool. and, you know, it, it, it is weird when that's, you know, kind of like a downgrade from the original game, you know? Just I think the, the original game had I'm smoother scrolling. But it doesn't about. bother me that much. I mean, I, I loved Live Alive and Octopath Traveler on Switch. Right. But I do feel as though there's going to get get a point, get to a point where it's like, oh, and now, like, they all start to, like, kind of look the same. That's true. There, there is, there is a risk of that. Um, you know, I think, I think Live Alive does distinguish itself from Octopath Traveler. Um, just because Octopath Traveler has like intentionally a very muted color palette. Yeah. Right. Um, and and so does Triangle Strategy. But, but yeah, there is that risk. Uh, it'll be interesting to see like what. You know, because it's been so long since we saw that one glimpse of Dragon Quest, I barely even remember what it looked like. Yeah. Like Dragon Quest should be very colorful. So I wonder if they're. It'll be interesting it, to see. It's taking so long because they're going to do something different. Like they're kind of rethinking about how they want it to look. I mean, maybe. I mean, it's weird that they've spent so much time on it because, <laughs> because man, let me tell you. Uh, Square Enix is not shy about doing some real garbage with the Dragon Quest brand. As I as I pointed out in uh, in uh, yeah, I feel our, like uh, I kind of didn't say that monsters game. Um, that, it's like the new mod. It's like expensive. Wait, already the new one on Switch? Yeah, like it, it like wow. it seemed to disappear like super quick. Wow. Well, I um, I mean, I, I tried the demo of it, and it was kind of like uh. I and that's another thing where, like, it, it really felt like a very cheaply made game. It just, mm. it, I, I'm sure it has its qualities to it, but it just, I, it just, it just felt like, it just felt like it just wasn't much to it. It just, I, I, I tried like Dragon, Tre the Dragon Quest Treasures demo as well, um, which was like that, that also it just it felt very sloppy just like the movement in the game felt bad yeah one of the moon um faithful servants but you know say what you will though i mean kudos to square enix for being so consistent on demos i mean they're like crazy consistent on de demos like for their big games their small games i mean it sold me on a lot of games it's it's Unsold me on a lot of others. Like I, I, I last night I tried the, um, the what's it called? Like Saga Emerald or whatever it's called. Yeah. They have a demo for that, and I'm like, well, this is not this is not for me. So <laughs> I'm glad I learned that. Yeah. It uh, very much seems to be a visual, a visual, more of a visual novel than anything. Oh yeah. Yeah, and just I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it just. It wasn't doing anything that grabbed me, and I didn't think the presentation. I think that's, that's an important realization. Was that to make. good? I think that huh? I, I made that realization uh, when you were telling me about uh, Legend of Legacy. Oh well, that's a dungeon crawler. I know, but I was like, you know, I just don't want to play this. I'm not going to even <laughs> think about getting mm -hmm. it or anything like that because it's just I I know that I don't even want to play that. Yeah. Whew, we are finally caught up. So let me continue to look through my PS3 list. Now I'll yeah, finally get back to my... Uh, lots of like good suggestions. Good suggestions for what? Uh, for PS, PS3 games. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, let, let, me, I, 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 let me continue to go down my list here just so I can... Um, I mean, I, I, I mean, most things are on other systems. You know, and some things are like locked to the generation, like Eternal Sonata. You know, you 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 got a, a sealed copy of that. Yeah, I'm surprised that it was uh, like only yeah, three, I think it was thirty three dollars. Yeah, it's like it's a great game. I I don't think there's I don't I could be wrong, but I don't think there's a PC version. And that's you know that's the be that's definitely the best version. Even of without game. backwards compatibility. Um. Let's see. Folklore, Genji Days of the Blade. Um, oh no, it's back. Here we go again. Make sure you free all the souls 
Not not exclusive, but probably the best version of uh, GoldenEye 007 Reloaded, <laughs> which I think is I think is an underrated game. Yeah, I saw like <laughs> some Resistance, one, two, and three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Haze? What about Haze? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is Heavenly like... Sword, the one, the one and only pledge game that I've played this year. Yeah, I mean, I feel like. <laughs> Nervous. Oh, I, I, I'm finally playing Crystallis, so and I'm I'm playing Crystallis. Uh, I've been playing it on on the uh, on the analog pocket. Well, oh, basically. interesting. Because I just you know when I'm done with it, I'll just transfer my save file. It's <laughs> saving in that game. I it took me a, a while to figure out oh, how yes. to do it. <laughs> it's very confusing. Well, do you remember? When you were at my house replacing some of my batteries, I told you, oh, my 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 saves in this died a long time ago. Right. And I just forgot how to use the saving and loading system as well yeah, yeah. because you Gotta replaced the battery. And you, after every battery, you said, okay, go downstairs and make sure they work. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Make sure like you save it and the save sticks. Well, I I thought I I did it, and then I, I'm like, wait, this isn't working. And then I finally figured out where you act because if you, if you say new game or, or no, if you say continue from the title screen, like I think it just continues where the last thing you did was, yeah. which apparently had me a new game. It was just like at the beginning. So since I said continue and it dropped me at the beginning of the game, I thought, oh, well, I guess my saves are gone. But right. there's like, it's you have weird. to get into it's the game and then there's like a save load to system. To and like the start button and select button bring up different menus. It's very confusing. And then I discovered not only did I still have saves, that the capacitor on the board saved the saves from getting lost while you swapped the battery. <laughs> Which was so cool. Yeah. Uh, I, ha I had my in-game save on it still, and also uh, a save that a, a friend played, like, you know, maybe half of the game on my copy back in the day. Mm -hmm. So that was... Uh... Um, I, I seen somebody... Um... Uh, Zane's dad saying everyone is missing Hetsune Mi <laughs> Miku uh, Project Diva for PS3. Is there a, ver a physical version that has like every single song on it? Because the only reason I'd want it is for like that version of the quartet theme. But I'm not sure if that's like it's only like DLC and stuff. Uh, T uh, Tenshi Ruya, five dollars super chat. Thank you. Thank you. Said. Uh... What about Genji Days of the Blade? Yeah, giant There's enemy crap. Yeah, I, I I think I just went past that on my my list here, which I've not really played through. That was like one of the games that I got like when I kind of went through a big PS3 phase, uh, you know, grabbing stuff while it was still cheap uh, because I was worried about um, uh, prices going up. Uh, when the PSN was threatened to go down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he the Heavenly Sword is the only... Well, I mean, it's, it's because Final Fantasy VII is so long. Mostly is the main reason. It's, it's ended up that way. Um, but uh, let's see. What else is... There? You know, I'm, I was saying the thing I was most sad that I couldn't get, I, that I didn't get at Midwest Gaming Classic, is I really want to get one of those uh, PS Move machine gun things. Oh yeah, we saw one set up. It yeah, awesome. but it was, it was like I want to get one, but I can't like take this on the plane. So I oh, bought yeah, it off yeah. of eBay, and it's like new. And then the the person was like, sold it, and I paid paid them. And they, they said, oh, I gotta see if I have this in storage. I gotta figure out if I still have it. Oh, it's like okay. Well, why do you even? Why like why is this happening? <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you even selling it if you're not even sure if you still have it? Yeah, I I, I was actually kind of 
got almost in that situation on the seller's side because uh, I, I let my dad use my eBay account. Well, I mean, I do it for him because he, you know, just my, my dad likes stamp collecting and, uh, you know, part of the fun of it for him is like, you know, separating like, you know, if he gets a better version of a stamp or something, you know, he like takes the, you know, the other one out of his collection and, you know, he eventually puts together enough to, you know, sell a lot, you know, a thousand stamps or something on eBay, you know, which he sells for very little, but you know, it's just, it's just part of the fun. You know, he wants to, it's just, it's just part of the fun for him. He just wants to, you know, sell it. Well, he had asked me a while back, like one had one lot had been on eBay for a long time. And he's like, ah, take that down. And I, I think I'll, I'll reorganize it into a, a different set. Well, I forgot to take it down. And months later it sold. And I, I got a notification on my phone. And I'm like, oh, geez, I hope I hope he hadn't like already like disassembled the set and like recombined the stands with a, with a new set. Luckily, he had not, so. <laughs> um, well, uh, Infamous 1 and 2, of course. I played a decent chunk of Infamous 2 a few years ago and never never finished it. That was... Uh, what am I shame. doing? Why did I do, just do that? Katamari Forever. Pretty sure that's only on PS3. Of course, it's, you know, it combines, I think it, it itself is combined levels from other Katamari games. Layer, of course. <laughs> Factor 5. That's right, Layer. Um, and of course, Little Big Planet 1 and 2, I mean, you know, you do have, you know, they, they are, even though you think of them as like, you almost think of each Little Big Planet as like superseding the next one, but I mean, they do have their own unique campaigns. Yeah, I never played this. And that's one. probably why, like, they've never been ported and never will be ported. You know that there's still like DLC costumes coming out for uh, the uh, Sackboy's Big Adventure. Really? Yeah. It's impressive. That's cool. I mean, I like that game. Yeah, yeah. It's good. I, I you know, it's... I should finish uh, it. <laughs> you know, there, there's... Aspects of it that I, I even would say I like more than like Super Mario 3D World. Oh, yeah. Which, I'm you know, that. This, this is a good game and all, don't get me wrong, but didn't didn't hit quite like other 3D Marios for me personally. Um, let's see, going down the list, obviously MGS4, um, Mo the Motor Storm games. Yeah. Um, Can you just picture it? I saw the someone mention uh, Ratchet and Clank Crack and Tommy. Yes, there's there's a bunch of Ratchet and Clank games. I'll I'll get to them as I go the down my list. Young um, the grass Puppeteer, of course. Uh, but yeah, Crack and Time, Quest for Booty, Tools of Destruction, <laughs> All for One. Uh, into the Nexus. Also a full frontal assault, but I believe that's also on Vita. Yeah. Not that that exactly, you know, is an upgrade for its like available. What about <laughs> what about Killzone? Well, what did, did about Killzone? You know, right here, I happen to have a copy of <laughs> Killzone Three that we Feel. bought at um um that we bought at. Uh, Midwest Gaming Class, like, we saw this at the very end of Saturday. And, uh, like, as we're eating dinner, we're like, man, we should have bought that. And, um, and, like, I think it was, like, the first thing both of us went looking for. Well, I, I, I wanted it for you. Well, yeah, it was the first thing we went looking for. Uh, the next day, and I couldn't find it. I'm like, was I, I couldn't even remember what seller it was. Like, I was pretty sure I was looking at the right seller, but I couldn't find it. And I thought no one else is going to buy the, be buying this sealed copy of Killzone Three for five dollars. Um, but the reason we wanted it, um, I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to see it, but it's got this like gold label, and it is it is PS3 favoritos. <laughs> It's probably I'm probably saying that very wrongly. Fa I no, favoritos. 
it's it's probably it's probably like favoritos. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing. But like, but, yeah, dude, it's funny to my, say. My just say it like, with your, my stupid your American accent. Favorite to my stupid American accent self, it, it sounds like a brand of of tortilla chips, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> like we like. I just love, like, I mean, I love how, like, you know, I did the same thing when I was in Germany. Like, I bought a few cheap things just to have, like, the USK badge on some games. Like, it looks ugly, but it's, I think it's actually nice to have, like, a few uh, things in your collection, like, to represent, like, how things are branded and sold in other countries around the world, right? And... Like, I just, I, I am absolutely in love with that branding. <laughs> PS3 favoritos. Yeah. We, we, I, I mean, we, we thought it was way too funny to uh, not get it for $5. It's awesome. I, I mean, I hope it. that it has, like, English. I mean, it has, it's ERSB, ESRB. I don't even care if it has English in it. I'll, I'll, I'll play it in Spanish and not understand anything, but I'll, I'll enjoy it. <laughs> anyway. I mean, maybe I'll enjoy it. I mean, I, I have not liked what I have played of the Killzone series. I, I played the demo of two. I didn't like it. I play, I bought a PS4 launch or near launch at least. Um, what was it called? Shadowfall, I think. Killzone yeah. Shadowfall. I didn't like it either. Um, so I don't know. This one is interesting, though, because it has move support. And, that's you know, that's I, what you would use that, that, that big controller that I that I wanted to get that machine gun would work. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like I want it. I want it for House, House of the Dead Four. That's like the only reason I want it. Or House of the Dead Three and Four, just because it has you can like you can like cock it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's, it's like oh I I kind of want to have this thing just for that that action. Exactly. Uh, there's a super chat. It's a pretty good question. I, I've been thinking about it since I saw it first pop up. Oh well, hold on. Before you get to that, okay. Uh, Tenchi Ruya had also had a five dollar super chat. Thank you. Saying, oh, there was also Mag for PS3. Man, that's oh, yeah. a game that you could you could see that for sold for a dollar like everywhere for a long time. Mag. Yeah, no one cared about that. Um, I think a lot of people did. It, I mean, it tried to be so calm, right? I mean, uh, I don't think it caught, I don't I, I don't, I don't think it caught on. I mean, I don't know anyone who played it. It was like massively something game, right? Massive action game. Massive action game. Yeah, that, I think that was it. <laughs> wow. Oh, Ashura worked on Mag. Yeah. Okay, so I, mean, I, don't mean, is, I don't mean to was, offend, so by the way. <laughs> and SOCOM never came back, did it? I mean, that, and that feels like something that that I'm surprised wasn't turned turned into a service game, right? Yeah, that's that, that feels like a a missing market that could be. Well, now they don't care because I got hell divers, but the next time something sounds too bad, yeah, is it similar gameplay? No, just like <laughs> like, it's just doing really well. Yeah, that's good. I'm I'm glad. I, I I'm I'm glad to hear something like that. I I mean, even though it's not really my kind of game, like I'm just I'm glad to hear of something like that succeeding because, let me tell you, there's a lot of people that just they're putting everything into that stuff and it's just it's just a failure because there's only but so, so much but hell divers is doing super super good i mean that's yeah well i mean there's, it's like there's it's like the rarity. So and and it does seem kind of cool like i don't really even under, know how it plays gameplay wise but it, the fact that these different factions like in real time are like right. competing against each other like on a global scale i think it's kind of neat Oh, sure. Says I worked on a ton of games. You guys have been listening to some somewhere or other. Well, I wonder if you cross paths with the uh, professor, the aforementioned uh, uh, professor, um, the teacher, the three D. Uh, oh yes. Okay, I see. Yes, uh, there was that uh, that that ten dollars super chat from Robert Hernandez. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. uh, saying, question for both of you. Have you ever replayed a game you once loved only to find that you now dislike it? Happened to me with Katamari Damacy. The timer alarm is like nails on a chalkboard for me. Wow, mm, man. Yeah, Katamari is a that. game that... Yeah, it's like one of those... That doesn't bother me. I mean, Katamari I mean, is a game... It's annoying in the I same can, way as, like, the... I can play any time. Uh, less than three... Or, like, one heart left in Zelda is. I, I mean, I... That... I mean, it's, it's bad, but it's never annoyed me. It's never grinded on my nerves that bad. Game you once loved only find you now dislike it. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Did you think you said you were thinking about it? I was it. thinking Did about it, but come up with anything? Um. Hmm. I mean, there's probably plenty of games that I played and and loved, and then realized like, oh, it's actually like not that great. Yeah, I probably. Uh, but I don't think there's any times where I've been like. It just like I can't stand it. You dislike it. Um, you know, I stuff like that. I'm just like, well, you know, I just don't ever want to play this again. Right. But I do have like the memories of like. I have respect it. for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, who knows? Like, if if it would be that fun to go back to like Uncharted One. Oh, I think it's, it would still be totally playable. I'm yeah, pretty sure that I but, played that on the Nathan Drake collection even and thought it's just it's just fine. It is it, yeah, it's, I mean it probably totally is. Fine. It probably is. Um uh, Man, I don't know. That's I didn't um, have to really think about it. Yeah, I just I can't That is Well this I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll think on it. I, I will... Uh, there's got to be something. Right? There's got to be something. Uh, there's got to be something, but it's, it's really hard to think of. I mean, for some reason, one thing that comes to mind is... Uh, um, one, one thing that comes to mind... <laughs> I wouldn't say loved, but, like, I... I had nice-ish things to say about Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, like, after I played through it, because, you know, I, I hated <laughs> Returns, hated, hated Returns. And I still don't like the mechanics of of Tropical Freeze. But, you know, I played Tropical Freeze in co-op, and co-op games are fun. You, are, are, you have a fun time playing co-op, even if yeah. the game isn't that, isn't that good, or isn't your cup of tea. Co-op, by, by virtue, is just, just fun, I think. Um, uh, especially couch co-op. Um, but then, like, I, I didn't like, I wasn't like re trying to like replay it or anything. But I was just like, I was playing a bit of it for that controllers video that we did. And uh, on Switch, I was playing the Switch version. And I'm like, boy, actually, I kind of hate this. <laughs> you know, I feel like. I feel like there Doesn't are games video, that does, I, does, aren't you like don't you go on like a big rant about that game like in that video specifically? I think so. I, I think I, I can't help myself but to do a little bit of a of, of, a, of a rant. Um, you know, I, I, I can't the the bullet sponge enemies and I I feel like and I I'm trying to blank on what it could be. I feel like there have been games where like it, it wasn't quite what I wanted or it wasn't quite what I expected, but I was just like, I was so excited for it that like, I couldn't admit to myself that like it, it actually wasn't that great or it wasn't what I wanted. And like, it wasn't until later that I was like, man, you know, like I just I didn't want to admit to myself that the hype wasn't didn't that it didn't live up to the hype. What it, my what my it, personal projection of what what I wanted it to be. What it, what, what, you know, like you know, there are games, Robert Hernandez, that I 
have avoided really playing that much in recent years, probably because of this very reason. Like, like for example, I, 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 I loved DK 64, Donkey Kong 64, because like all I wanted to do Thanksgiving break any given year was just like play like the big new holiday game and just like binge it. And I like that game was good for a binge. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed the heck out of myself, but that game is also too big for its own good. Wait, what game? I would Donkey Kong 64. Uh -oh. I, I probably wouldn't like it that much. I mean, I don't know, maybe, but. Um, I, I have to think about it because I feel like you know I, I feel like there could be example. some like um, I feel like there could be some like early like maybe like WiiWare or PSN or, or Xbox Live Arcade stuff that like just because like the novelty of that was so fresh at the time you know yeah there wasn't like a lot of choice I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, what am I trying to do here? Wouldn't be surprised if revisiting something like that wouldn't uh, wouldn't go over so well. For a limited time, um, buy the one, get one, last one. There was uh, well, I'm gonna think keep, I'm gonna... I, we should both keep ruminating on that. Yeah. Um, because it is a good question that I feel like I don't have a good answer for. Um, but uh, there was also a 499 from, from good old Scott Davis. Always good to see you. Oh. Uh, saying, hey, dudes, did you catch the eclipse this week after MGC on your way back from Wisconsin? I experienced the path of totality up in Canada. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, I, I did not. I was on the plane. Uh, I saw it get kind of grayish outside, but it was not. It was not to be. My my wife and I. I, I saw that. I saw people gathering like under a skylight and like sh holding up their phones and looking through the glasses. I didn't have any glasses. I mean, I I, I feel like I, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't on this stream. Maybe it was on the backloggery stream. I I I I'm, I may have said this before. Apologies if I have. I can't remember if I said it on this stream or not. But like I I like there was there was an eclipse. Um, I want to say like third grade or thereabouts. Um, I think it, I don't know if it was a total eclipse, but you know, it was at least a, 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 a most eclipse, <laughs> a mostly eclipse. Um, it might have been a total eclipse. I don't, I don't, I, 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 at the time I didn't know there was a distinction. So, um, but I, I distinctly remember like, you know, they're telling you in school, like, don't look at the eclipse, you know, it will blind you, you know, you have to have these glasses or, you know, these other techniques for, for viewing it. And I'm just like, something that's going to blind you is like the scariest thing I can imagine. Like, I, I, I don't want anything to do with this. I don't want anything. To do with this. And, you know, nowadays, my understanding is that it's not like, it is significantly, I mean, maybe a little more dangerous to look at than just staring at the sun. Uh, the difference, the main thing though, is people want to look at the eclipse and you don't have as strong of a reflex to look away from it because it's dimmer, but it's just as dangerous or more, maybe a little more dangerous. Um, but like, just because like I was like scared off of it, it from like such a young age, like, I've just like never been interested in looking at it. Like, because it just, it, it scared the crap out of me. <laughs> like, and I, I, I know it's like, it's, you know, it's a silly concern and there's safe ways to watch it. But like, it's just like this like deeply embedded, like fear. Like, like, I mean, I, I wouldn't say fear, but it's just like. N now it is? I, no, but like, I, I mean, it's just like, it's just. I don't know, just some kind of trauma, I guess, right? And so when I see like other people like, ooh, wow, look at the eclipse. Like, you know, I was in the airport watching them. There's just like 
because it like I'm sure it's cool and all, but just because of that experience when I was, you know, in third grade, um, like I just when I'm watching all these people like being hyped about, like I just I feel nothing. I feel no desire. Like I used to feel, I used to feel a bit of fear. It's just like, oh, I want to be inside in a room with no windows. Like <laughs> I want to take zero chances. <laughs> I used to be that nutty about it. Mm -hmm. um, but like now I'm just like, yeah, I, I just don't care. <laughs> wait, wait. It's just, I, this I, is I, not, yeah, I, it's not interesting I, to me. The freak boar says I phobia. Corey's flap is also scary. I mean, maybe that's what, it, like my, you know, it's like I was telling you, like, like how eye drops are so hard for me. Like my eye protection reflex is like very strong. Yeah. And like, like to the point where it's like, like the idea of watching an eclipse even safely is like not appealing to me. Hmm. I, I, for me, the thing that makes me most sad about missing it is, the, it's just like one of those things where you kind of get this sense of, you can kind of generate a sense of being like super, your your own size in this like universe, you know, where it's just like, you see these things happen. Uh, I don't know, like a, a lot. I told you about how uh, I think that just like like my sense of scale in in the uh, in life and in uh, in the universe is like it got all messed up recently because I read this story. Oh, he <laughs> told me about this story. And it's like, like I so I I'd never read it before, but I re if if anybody in the chat has ever read uh, the short story that Stephen. King short story, uh, The Jaunt. And it's like literally the scariest thing that I can think of. I mean, you, you told, you and told it's, me. And it's like, I, I like think about it every day, like for weeks <laughs> since I've like read it. I mean, you told it to me, I, I, I read the Wikipedia summary. Like it's, it's an interesting story. It's, 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 a, it's a, it's a cool story. I'd like to see a movie version of it, but like it, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting thought exercise, but like it, it's not messing me up or not. Yeah, I mean, I still think about it constantly in the idea of, like, how our our brains can't even fathom, like, imagine that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's just like, I've been thinking about it constantly since, since I first read it. And... I don't know. Like, I just can't stop thinking about it. It's like, real, it's like, it's kind of messed me up. And I think that, you know, you think... Uh, the timing of the eclipse with that, you know, makes you se have this sense of size in the universe of just like being so small, we can't. And you know, like I always, uh, um, like one of my favorite photos is like the uh, the pale blue dot photo. Mm-hmm. That the uh, um, uh, what should, what should I call it? The uh, uh, satellite turned around and took a picture of the Earth as it was like leaving the solar system. Well done, have you have you heard of this? Oh, oh, sure, sure. Yeah, it's like I, I, it's like one of my favorite photos, but it's just you know it's just like the sense of it. Uh, so, so Mr. Airwalk is asking what the story is about. Um, can I like? I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I mean, the story is, you know, it's it's less than 30 pages. You can freely read it online. Uh, it's about the discovery of um, essentially teleportation. And uh, the, the framing device is like a father telling his kids and his wife about this thing about teleporting teleporting you pass through like a portal and you come out on the other side right uh and like it's changed the entire world and like you know like there's like traveling to other planets and stuff where you just go through this thing and you immediately come out the other side um and what people have <laughs> through like testing you know uh, the person who discovered it sent a mouse through first and it came out on the other side, and then it like immediately died. 
and then you know tried it with another one it kept on happening and uh, the only thing that was going through and coming out the other side it was not immediately dying is the goldfish uh, so what eventually they discover that uh, they they want to send a person through and uh, they offer a, a a person on death row to go through this portal to be awake when it happens, just to see what happens. And he goes through, comes out the other side, and like basically he says, "I, I was in there for an eternity." So what they they discover, what they discover is that. You can pass through the, the portal fine to teleport if you're asleep. So they administer everybody anesthesia, like when they get sent through. Um, and the people that are awake, basically you're just in a void of nothingness. You know, nothing to do. You're just like sitting there. And essentially you're there for like what they for an indetermined amount of time uh they come like like maybe thousands or millions of years yeah like floating in in nothing for you know millions of years yeah Corey is talking about the job and it's and it's like and it's literally like the scariest thing that i can think of Oh, and you know, I, I read the the summary, and it sounds it sounded like you know part of the story was also that there were there were a handful of other incidents where this is half where it had it, it had, well you know it wasn't just that one body. prisoner like it, it's happened a handful like less than ten I think it was like like maybe seven times or something where under various circumstances where they were either not asleep or you know whatever yes. circumstances where there were a couple of other instances of people dying after they understood the solution yes honestly the scariest part is but the scariest thing that happens to anybody in the entire story is that one guy finds out that his wife is cheating on him and like takes her and turns off all the endpoints and pushes her through one. Oh, and just like that is like that's like the scariest part wow so like nobody knows what has happened to this person more than an eternity yeah yeah i mean wow <laughs> well anyway i looked up a list of solar eclipses oh okay and in uh in may 199 on may 10th 1994 there was an annular eclipse across northern Ohio. So I, that would have been fourth grade. You know what? Th this is actually funny. I can't believe this never occurred to me. But it, like, I, I literally thought of this like just yesterday. I never uh, thought Slichar, about it. It's, it's called The Jaunt. You can read it like online. It's just a Stephen King. Like he wrote it for like Twilight Zone magazine or something like that. Back in the in the eighties, and it's it's in the uh, it's in the, sh the his book of short stories called uh, Skeleton Crew. But anyway, I I would have been in fourth grade, um, in ninety four, and and I, it's it's just funny that I that I looked this up because I I, I literally thought yesterday, like I, I again I, I just it blows my mind that I never made this connection. But. <laughs> It's really easy to figure out what grade I was in in any given year because I, I was in the grade when the year turned over, I was in, I was already in the grade of that year. So like I went to kindergarten in 1990, I went to First, first grade. grade in 91. Oh, okay, yeah. Second yeah, grade, yeah. 92. Or, I mean, I started 
I started second grade in 91, but when 90, when it turned over to 92, I was in the middle of second grade. And I can't believe it never occurred to me that it was that easy to remember what grade I was in any given year. <laughs> yeah, I started 94 in fourth grade, started 95 already in fifth grade. I graduated in 2002 from 12th grade. Uh, we might be the same age for some portion of the year, TJ Dorsey. I was born in 84. And I went to kindergarten very early. I, I, I wouldn't have been able to... Um, I wouldn't have been able to go to um, kindergarten, I think, at the age I did today, because I think that like the, the cutoffs are much earlier now. But like I was... I was like a, a week or two away from turning five years old when I went to kindergarten. I remember very specifically being very conscious of that. Like I, I was like very afraid of the other kids finding out I was only four years old. <laughs> I remember that very clearly. I was like, like you you I didn't have to survive. Know. Huh? You didn't want them to know? I didn't want the other kids to know. Like I thought they would make fun of me for being four years old. Oh. But I mean, it was only like a week or two before I turned five. Yeah, like. Mr. Airwalk says, born 80, same thing here. Or at least the same thing with your age. Your age is easy to keep track of. You might have to do a little further jump of logic for your your grade, but yeah, anyone born on a, a zero year has uh, it's it's easy to remember how old they are. Especially you know, like my cousin's son was born in two thousand, so like, there's no forgetting what age he is. You know? Yeah. Math, right? Yeah, man. You don't have to do any crazy stuff. But yeah, so I, I was saying third grade, give or take. I was fourth grade and during that eclipse in 94. I mean, you, you look at these like lists of eclipses, like visible in certain areas. And it's like, it's really funny how there's like clusters where they're like not that far apart and clusters where they're like way far apart. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of books, though, really quick. Um, I like made a, a a goal to try to read like two books this year, and it's like it's hard for me to like really. Was one like, of them that Stephen King short story book? Yeah, well, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm. That's that is one of them. Yeah, I I no, thought, like that oh comes. that might be a good you know option for trying to uh, read more. You know, like a, like a short story book might be good for that. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. But does anybody use like a? Uh, like a, a Kindle paper paper white white to uh, to read on, and if so, uh, is it? I wonder if it's like I was, I've been feeling like I wonder if it's easier to focus on that than it is to like even just focus on using a uh, like reading a like a, like a real physical book. General Snakes. I don't, my that's, my, that's my, my I mom should... has a. I, I got my mom many many years ago. Uh, you know, you know, before they, before Kindles were even tablets, you know, I got Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Like, so the paper cool. white is not like a, a tablet. It's like, it's an easier oh, yeah, screen yeah, to read. E yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, at some point, like, like that was what Kindle was at first, right? Like, um, or yeah, yeah, it is a Kindle because, um, I, I, yeah, it's a Kindle. Um, but like at first they were just those, and then eventually like well they made like the Kindle, uh, is it the Kindle Fire that's like the, the it's just a tablet. But yeah, like I mean I think they're great. I mean I you know I haven't extensively used one myself, but I you know what I've seen of the one my mom has. Is well, the really the cool. new ones like have like a like a ten week battery life. Are we there yet? Are we even Apparently, okay. I just think it's like it's like a, a long battery life. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's barely doing anything. It doesn't yeah. have any, there's no light element. Yeah. Um, I mean, you say paper white. I don't, I don't know why, if there's like different 
like strengths of white. I mean, I wouldn't call it like like a like a real pure white. Like, I mean, it's like right. I mean, I, I guess it's just like a lot easier on your eyes than right. Oh yeah. I mean, of course you have to be under a lamp, but that you know makes it nice. But the, I think the new ones, like the paper whites, have like a backlit. Like a, like a and of course, it, it's probably easier to just like pick up and set down. You yeah. Know? Just so I mean, like I've been considering something like that. I, I think they're cool. I mean, yeah, I yeah. Well, I mean, I just, I'm you know, I, I'm admittedly not not exactly an avid reader, but uh, uh, of of novels. But uh, I, I think they're I think they are cool. They are neat. Um. Yeah, I mean that's something I like. I've thought about. Like, I wonder if it would just be easier for me because the thing with books is like I immediately want to fall asleep. It's like I don't know if it's like I don't know. Like, it's just hard for me to like focus on them, mm -hmm. and it's just you know I start to like just get tired right immediately right away. Um. There was a notification that Scott Snyder has been a member 44 months in a row. Uh, says, I'm 44 years old and a member for 44 months. When does that ever happen? Well, you know, <laughs> since we're just talking about like relating ages uh, or grades to other things, you better be careful and make sure you don't become 45 next month and 46 the next month. That's... There's, there, there's another horror story for you. <laughs> um, once you become an M-Link subscriber for the same age and same number of months, then you age every month. Yeah. Age a whole year every month. Anyway, Scott Snyder also says, what videos are you releasing next? Room tours? Any yeah, chance of a retro NAS video? Uh... Not retro NAS, but like I've been I've been working pretty heavily on the uh, on the room tour. I did, like I re-recorded like all my on-camera stuff. Oh, so uh, you actually did do it? Uh, you've finished recording that stuff. I I finished like re-recording like the stuff that I already had done months ago. Ah, oh, okay. Because uh, you know I I had to redo the on-camera stuff. Well, at least I just did them all that I had already shot because. Yeah. Um, you know, I say in the one, I say this is how I make it in 2023. <laughs> so I, you know, I've just been using, like I, I re-recorded it, and I, I actually say, you know, this is, at least I hope that it's still 2024 because I've had to re-record this <laughs> once already. Um, but my, my favorite thing that I'm like kind of <laughs> happy about is because since I like, like think like certain things have changed since I last like had worked on it right and you said you said you know i'm done i'm not touching oh, i know anymore. i know but <laughs> the thing is is like i don't want to reshoot all this stuff and some and like it's just like certain things move mm -hmm. like they're in like one place so i i kind of explain it in the in the video where i say you know you know this uh thing things around here are kind of like the oldest house <laughs> from, from, uh, so don't be surprised if you know certain things are in di like in different places from shot to shot. So I, I just think it's funny you, you are actively like, explaining away continuity errors. <laughs> yeah, by just saying you know that makes it like, easy like on you though from from control. That right? makes it way easier on you. That's a great idea. Because things are constantly like moving around, or I like move a shelf, or I move a thing, but um. Yeah, like well, I, I, mean, in I terms feel like of... I'm in a pretty good rhythm with it, so I, you know I'm just gonna do a bit each day on it, and uh, um, we do. In terms of other things, is, uh, I, right now I'm working on a video for Digital Foundry. Uh, I'm working on Final Fantasy 14 Xbox review. But um, I mean, ideally, you're saying like it's only gonna probably take you like through the, the week. Yeah. I mean, at least I hope. I, mean, I, I hope so because I hope so. I hope so too because. I mean, it, you know, it, unless we change our minds, I don't think we will, though. I mean, we're, we're planning to do a Final Fantasy VII rebirth discussion, just like yeah. we did for Remake. I mean, no one really cared last time, but, you we know, it was fun to do. we just want to do it because we did it for the other game, and it's just, just a thing to do. Why not? 
uh, you know, it would be more like a podcast type video, kind of, you know? Yeah. Which would be fine. I think that's that's fun. That's something we should not, we should feel like we can do if we want to do, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's funny but because... I need to beat the game. I, I'm at the point of no return, but because I'm I'm busy right now and because like I've had to move my PS5 just for recording like the frame rate data stuff. Uh, like it's just it's not a good time for me to try and beat Seven Rebirth right now. But yeah. I can. And uh, there is a chance like if it doesn't happen fast enough, like I'll I'll, I'll try to. Well, I I need to make an episode. And I was going through yeah. like some old scripts and found some uh, some stuff that I found like a games within games uh, number two script that had like six pages written in it, which is like basically a plenty, plenty for a video. I have like five pages of a internal save file uh, backup. Yeah. Although you know, like at, at the same time, I was thinking like I could probably do like a dedicated mem card pro episode be, like if i wanted to just about that like the different like the three different kinds of those um i just i <laughs> i just found out uh by installing um free psx boot on a memory card for ps1 you know you can uh boot backups or uh international discs and it will like work with the mem card pro and by selecting the correct game id so you can do individual uh uh per game saves or memory card files using a mem card pro with real discs which is kind of kind of awesome i think yeah. if, if you're if you're in that kind of thing but we'll see what happens i mean that's just something i was th i i have thought about doing that is like its own quick like five minute episode. Uh, so there was a 499 super chat from Joshua Helmicky. Thank you, as always. Thank you. Uh, saying, well, just finished moving. The jaunt is a masterclass in horror. Yeah. Puppeteer is a masterclass in game design. And yeah, life is good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny because, uh, you know, like, like the jaunt is like, it's like, it is like the scariest thing I can think of. Well, like, don't think of it if it scares you that. No, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that. It's just like, that's what I think is so interesting about it, I guess. Can I go to three? Am I on three? I'm go I, I, I still have my uh, tab open with the PS3 games. Any, anything else in here? Yeah, the Resistance games are exclusive still. Ridge Racer Seven. I, I I know. I know. But like it's it's it's. I I feel as though, you know, I say in in. Tokyo Jungle. I say in this in this video. That I'm just happy that it's. Uh, that things change have changed so much it can change like so much at any given time uh, that I'm you know like there's certain aspects that I'm happy that I get to in include now because I've put it off for so long like now I can like add stuff about like the projector setup it's like over there or um, you know like different 4k scalers stuff like that like I think that that is all stuff that I'm happy I get to put in there now should I get back to going through uh, my my yeah? Midwest if game if you do that, then I'll go through. I can go through when you finish going through yours. I can. I'll get mine. If anybody yeah. Um. And still interested. In that or I can. I got I, I, like, back to the PS2 game because like that was most of what I bought on Sunday or no Saturday. Because I we bought some stuff before it actually opened. <laughs> So I think it, I think it was. Now that I think about it, I think it was Saturday. Um, actually, you know what? There's at least one thing that's not here. Is that Jack Sparrow right there. I mean, it's definitely based on Jack Sparrow. I'll I'll, I'll say it while it's on my head. Uh, I I got uh, I got Saints Row Three Remastered or whatever it's called 
for for the for the Xbox for the One. Xbox. It was a sealed copy, dirt cheap. I feel like it's a little hard to find, so I was like, "Well, that's a fine thing to get sealed for cheap. Why not?" Because yeah. you you kind of sold me on it from. Well, it's that. so stupid. But you played on the stream. Yeah, it is so stupid. Stu stupid in a good way. Um. Anyway, I got Gradius three and four PS two. Um, was that that was inspired by? Uh, was that inspired like seeing like my segment on it in the? It, I mean, in part. I mean, it's something that I've almost bought many, many times, and I, I feel like part of the reason. Like, I mean, you know, I'm not the biggest shooter guy, but you know, you know, these are neat games, and I feel like probably the biggest inspiration is because I, I do want to eventually get Gradius Five. And it just seems like if I have, if I get Gradius Five, I should have Gradius Three and Four on PS2. <laughs> but I mean, these are, I mean, these are good versions to play. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if there are any niceties that can make Gradius Three any more feasible to beat on this version. I, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, this I am not excited about, but. It was a good price, and I feel like I had seen it going up. It was no manual, so that's probably why it was a good price. But Resident Evil Outbreak File Two. I have the first. I, uh, one. like I was. It's, it's, it's in my box of stuff to get rid of. Is it even worth like keeping around? Oh, File Two. No, File One. Oh, File One. The, the it's one. uh, it's a weird game, man. It is so weird. It's like. I mean, can you play it single player? You can, but it's like kind of a fever dream. <laughs> it's it's weird. <laughs> is it like is it worth playing because it's so weird or? I mean, give it a try. Like, I'm, I I mean I'm just. Yeah, wondering, I like, believe I mean, there are private. I believe there are private servers. I, but I don't um, want to play. I don't want to. I don't want to play it. That I know, way. but like I, I I would be interested in like like say like what if like me drum and like. Sefi or someone could like uh i forget how many players can play um like if, if we could get like a little bit of a group that would be i think a fun backloggery thing to do hmm. like if you could do a private private server i mean maybe you could you know yeah that might be really fun but like if you play it by yourself with like ai characters it's just like it's the game does not really explain itself, and it's just like very obtuse. Mm. But if if you're playing with other people, I could see it being kind of fun. I okay. I, Dimension says, to my knowledge, only the Japanese versions of the game can play be played on a private servers. That would be fine. I mean, I even if I couldn't like play this exact copy, like if I if I'm going to play through something, I want to own it. Even if I can't play the actual disc, you know, I just I, I like to have it on my shelf. It, it, it motivates me to play it someday. But I, I I remember like just like wandering around this this level, and like there's just all of these like AI control players, and they're just like on the ground, like crawling around in the throes of death, just being like. Help me! And I'm just like, I do not know what button to push to help you. <laughs> it's just, I mean, I remember it was like just kind of trippy and funny because it's just like you were just like in this situation and you have like so little context, so little idea of what you're doing. Like, it's probably something where you really should be like reading a manual and like understanding like what to do before you get into it. Because it's, it's pretty obtuse. It is it is bizarre. I could see it being fun with friends, though. I could see it being fun with friends, but it is it is strange and obtuse. Also, not ultra, ultra, ultra excited about this, but this was a good price on Castlevania Curse of Darkness, which is a game I owned a few times in the past. It just could not get into it, but everyone, well, maybe not everyone, but like I keep hearing a lot of people saying they like it. And like, I feel like my motivation was renewed 
with the Netflix show because it, it uses three and this as a lot of its basis. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I got to give it another try. And it it had been going up in price, and I feel like this was this is like forty six dollars, which I feel like is a good bit less than I have seen it for lately. There were a number of things like that where I'm like, are prices stabilizing or going even going back down a little bit? Because I'm pretty sure I had seen this for a good bit more than that lately. So I was like, mm, maybe I'll end up loving it. If not, I can sell it again. <laughs> I probably won't, though. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no, no chance. Yeah. Also, Sonic Sonic 2 Master System was a good price because no manual. I'll pay a good price for no manual. Um. Oh, and this was cheap. Final Fantasy 2 Wonder Swan. Because I've got Final Fantasy 1 Wonder Swan. Yeah. Good thing to have because I don't have a lot of Wonder Swan games in the like case I do need to show something on Wonder Swan. Like I, I would have shown it in the the new video, the compilations video, because I showed Final Fantasy 1 Wonder Swan. If I had had this, I would have shown it. Oh, no. Um, I really also, want this grappling hook to allow me to swing. I try, I so, this is something I've been putting off for many, many, many years. <laughs> and was like, always like, I should do this, but I kind of don't want to do this. And it's all because of one game, a game that I did not get, a game I tried to get, but I couldn't find a copy at a price I was willing to pay because it's it's a bad game that has started going up in price slightly. Not like a lot. It's not expensive, but it's it's a lot more than it's worth. And that's Ghostbusters. I did not get Ghostbusters, but now I have to get Ghostbusters because I've kind of committed <laughs> to it. Um, Ghostbusters NES, terrible game. Terrible game, but it's a game that I owned as a child. And there were three games from my childhood NES collection that I had for years and years and years and years, and years put off rebuy. Because I was like, I was like, well, if I'm not going to get Ghostbusters, which is a bad game, then there's no point in getting these other two games. Huh? Daily Gamer says I was expecting it to be green. <laughs> that was not part of my childhood NES collection. <laughs> I didn't have a Genesis or Game Gear. Play Green Dog. Anyway, Ghostbusters, bad game. And I was like, well, I don't want to get Ghostbusters. It's a bad game. I don't want that to be on my backlog. <laughs> so then what's the point in buying Where's Waldo? Which I did beat back in the day. And what's the point of getting Jeopardy? Which was really more my dad's game. Um, like, where, where the, what's the point of getting these if, if I'm not going to get Ghostbusters? Because, like, getting Ghostbusters, the, the main reason to get it would be to re-complete my childhood NES collection, which was only a handful of games. It wasn't that. Like, I don't know, 10 or that's, so, That's, that's a good, like, goal, I think. Though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, but I, 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 I like it finally hit me like I'm gonna do it. I saw uh, I saw a copy of Ghostbusters for fifteen dollars. Or no, for yeah, it was fifteen dollars because most other places are selling for like twenty, if not twenty five. Like it must sell just for the license or people like me. Like uh, my goal has been you know to go well beyond my childhood NES collection, but you know as other people maybe they're just kind of trying to recreate what they had back in the day. So maybe that's why Ghostbusters has gone up to, gone up to, you know, $20, $25. But I saw a place they had for, for $15, and I should have got it. And I saw another place that had it for $20, but since I was down to, like, my last $16, I thought, well, maybe I can talk them into, like, well, this is all the cash I've got left. But then it was gone. So for some reason, people are buying Ghostbusters NES, but it is a bad game. Because of the new movie, maybe. I don't know. It's a bad game. It's a bad game. But, and in, in resignation of needing to get Ghostbusters NES, 
I was like, well, I need to get Where's Waldo and Jeopardy too, so I got them. Also cheap games. So. And one one came with a dust cover, so that's nice. Hey, it's a um, and lastly, and lastly, is this your, is this your biggest one? Well, no, I uh, two Super Nintendo games, one Super Famicom. This was really cheap. I, I was surprised how cheap this game was. It was ten bucks. Let me see. Uh, it. Uh, S -S -S Sandra no die Boken. Oh, so that's not. Yeah, you know, that's not the the. Uh... No, that's not the big one. It's not the big one. All right, isn't um, the big one next? The big one's next. Okay. Uh, you know, die Boken has become one of my my favorite Japanese words lately. Oh yeah, after, especially after John and I talked about it a bit, because there were there were several games we were were looking at in his collection that was something something die Boken. Bulkin is just like an adventure, and a die Bulkin is like a great adventure. <laughs> so it's like so, so, so Sandra is the name of the character that, like the green, the green I don't know, lizard dude. Is it not really a lizard. I don't know what it is. The green thing, the green thing that is the co-op partner in the arcade version of of the Legend of the Valkyrie. Valkyrie no Densetsu. Um, anyway, the big one, the big one, yeah, was Soul Blazer. Oh, a big one! <laughs> were you? you that's I was waiting you were, for it. You were waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was the big one. This was oh, the big a one. big one! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I put this game off for years because it was creeping up the prices I didn't care to pay, but then my resolve to get it was renewed when Joe covered it on a game sack not all that long ago. Mm -hmm. Well, it might have been criminally overlooked games. I don't, I don't know if this was one he considered in that category, but I, I you know, he, he really sold me on it. <laughs> He sold me on it. So you got a big one. Like, like I think we like, we were. Uh, no, I we was like, like, I was completely off the rails, like almost immediately. Well, you were, but like, I think, I think, the, I think this may have tripped you off to go off the rails because like you, you got a game from the same vendor for the same price that yeah. uh, we both like, like, I think it was just the fact that it's like, okay, I'm, there seem to be no heights to which this man Yeah. Cuz I, I It's like this is something I was like looking for. Cuz like I, I went into the convention wanting to buy like one like one game I really wanted that was a little more expensive than I would normally pay. I mean, not I mean not not like not pay like an unfair price or anything, but like you know normally I'm not buying expensive games. But I was like yeah. I want to buy I want to treat myself to one game that I normally consider outside my price range. And when I saw it, when I saw Soul Blazer, I'm like, that's the one. <laughs> there was this, I, I don't know if it's criminally overlooked, more like a petty crime. <laughs> you know, as, as Jill always says in those episodes, like, you're going to jail because you, you've overlooked this game. <laughs> You don't want to go to jail, do you? So you better play these. Um, do you want me to? Go, does anybody want me to grab? Or want me to finish this level and then grab what I finish this level and then we'll finish the stream going over your 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 gifts. Okay. Well, you went. You went overboard. I yeah. This, I went with the rails. This, this is why I'm saying you got to bring a, and my a big set one amount was of the cash. first one. But I had yeah. some other well, ones that were like equally. I mean, what what was the first one that big that that Super Nintendo one you got when I got Soul Blazer? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. My my first one was actually that Sonic Two. I think. Well, I don't remember actually. I I saw the Sonic Two and wanted to grab it, and then when we we ran into uh, uh, Tiger Chainsaw, right? He grabbed one of the manual Sonic 2s. And I kind of was like, ooh, I need to go back and get it before someone else gets that manual less Sonic 2 because I'm not willing to pay because there was another manual copy. But I was like, I don't 
I, I don't want to pay the manual price. I want to pay the no manual price. <laughs> so I was like, I better go back and get that. So I can't remember if I got that first or Soul Blade right first. But yeah, like once I got that, I was like, okay. Oh, I see. That's my that's my big one. I feel like there's a lot of it's a really long level. Um. You know, we we were commenting, like I I feel like all of a sudden, like I'm seeing, like I saw it like when me and Audie were were out game shopping the other weekend. Um. I didn't buy that much because I was, uh, I, I bought some cheap stuff. Yeah, I did not get I thought, Hyper Duel, man. I, like, that was I really was thinking good, about it. Like $5 or $4 games even uh, when I was out shopping with I because I was like, okay, I just got back from Germany and we're going to a convention. I need to, I need to, need to cool it. Uh, but, uh, no big oh, was I, saying? I had a reason for bringing that up. Oh, yeah, I just feel like when we were out there and then also the Midwest Game Classic, it, just, it feels like more and more Master System stuff is just, like, starting to come out of the woodwork. Yeah. Like, it just it feels like places where you almost never saw Master System games suddenly have, like, a lot of Master System. Or not, like, a lot. I mean, not, not like you would see in Europe, but still a lot more Master System than is normally in the U.S. Or in certain regions of the U.S., like for whatever reason, there was a lot of Master System at uh, uh, Long Island Expo the one year we were there. We'll be back there this year. I hope to see more Master System and more Genesis because it was a very Sega-heavy convention for whatever reason. But most other places, like not that Sega-heavy, especially not Master System. It was just like there were many vendors at Midwest Gaming Classic that had many Master System games. Yeah. Corey did not get Hyper Duel. I didn't. <laughs> did that guy even uh, have guy, it? He, uh, he said, "I'll give it. I'll give you a uh, give it. Give you a hundred dollars off of it." <laughs> <laughs> That's still a spicy meatball. Yeah, yeah, too spicy. Chico Might says, five games at a retro store is a lot of Master System games. <laughs> I bought the first one that came into my store years ago. Only one they got in 15 years. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of how it tends to be usually around here, but I'm just, Master System games have been coming about. Yeah. It's just been happening. I think it is. It's just this level is like it's really long. I was making Swiss cheese out of the Johnny Lamon sales. Holy holes! We could be next. Things that says there was like six Odyssey two games at the convention. The Bay game DK Junior math loose, but still too much. The sales would soon be more air than canvas. There were a lot of Intellivision games there. I study as she goes. I even saw people inquiring about them. <laughs> I was, I was, I was another thing you're like, you don't really see much of. And it's like, oh, I mean, not that, that's not something I look for, but it's interesting to see. You know, something that, that, that warmed my heart was I saw a couple of times, like I saw like, you know, kids with their dads, uh, going through like the NES games. Mm -hmm. The kid was like, Ooh. Ooh, is that one? That one's on your list. <laughs> you know, like, oh, oh, what about that one? Did you get that one yet? Like, so, like, you know, clearly they've been like watching YouTube together, or maybe even right, playing right. like some EverDrives or emulators together, and like, you know, sharing the NES games. And it, you know, I yeah. the the thing I like about it is that obviously whatever experience they had talking about these NES games, like it left an impression on the kid. Like they remembered what games their dad was looking sure. for. Yeah. What games that they had shown him, you know? And it wasn't just something that they like saw and like immediately forgot about. And they were like engaged in, yeah. you know, their dad's quest to get some of these games, you know? 
And I, I, I saw several times, uh, like, I think it was with one of these where I saw, like, the kid with his dad. Um, like, there was just, like, you know, a whole bunch of NES games at the vendor, and they were just like, you know, they, I, I, I would say they were probably either early in their collection or maybe they were going for, like, a specific, you know, like, complete set. I don't know. But, like, they were, like, the kind of people that were, like, finding many things they, they were, were looking going for. for. Oh, a big one. <laughs> they found many things they were looking for, like, you know, at one vendor. Like, so obviously, you know, they were either looking for a broad group of titles or a specific group of titles. And, you know, I saw that they were, you know, they were stacking up several. And they were like, oh, 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 isn't that one of the ones you were looking for? And, you know, I just, I, I like the idea of, you know, the kids being uh, uh, interested in, you know, yeah. Their their dad's collection, you know? Yeah. I don't I don't I don't know if you have that so much in your house. No. But so I was like, you know, it's it it's good to see these kids engaged with NES games on some level, right? Yeah. It makes me happy. Well, Zane's dad says Zane was excited with the NES games you bought. Well what what did you buy, Zane's dad? Because when we ran into you I think you had only bought uh, Son uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, not not for resale, <laughs> which you had been looking for. I'm pretty sure my Sonic is a not for or is a is a not for resale, not a not not for resale. Because <laughs> I don't I don't care. My, my 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 Uncharted one is a not for resale that I got on eBay. Oh wow. Because, like, I have, like, a not-for-resale MGS4, of course, because that was what came with my system. But, like, when I was like, well, I want to I check out this Uncharted game. Like, I, you know, the one I bought on eBay was a not-for-resale. Oh, oh, mostly black boxes that I didn't have yet. Black box, sports games, Donkey Kong, etc. Oh, and Life Force. That's a good game. Cool cup. I want to get the Japanese salamander sometime just because yeah, the cover let is salamander awesome. Or, I mean, the, the card is awesome. It used to be really cheap and common, but I think it's been going up. I think the PC Engine salamander is a bit pricey, too. Oh, and Kirby's Adventure. Nice. I'll make Zane happy. Trying to get this fish. Oh, hey, we got we got smoke monster here. Oh, always good to see ya. Yeah. A flash of steel, a well-timed block with his shield, and a yank of the hook for good measure. Yes, I can answer. Was running the Weaver right I'm just trying to. Now I gotta check what my Sonic is. Let me see. Had replaced our scared little boy <clears throat> with a fine. My Sonic is indeed not for resale. Ah. <laughs> did, did I show the Resident Evil um, Operation Raccoon City that I got in Germany? No. I can't remember I if think. I uh, let let me let me grab it. It's I think it's neat. Grand comment, yes, RB. I don't like I. I just have my 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 release day copy. 
What's that? Oh, wow. Good vibe. Collecting says there's also a very uncommon ESRB version of Sonic 1. That's neat. Probably. Probably Majesco published, maybe. 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 Well, I mean, you know. The, I, mean, I, have an, I have a ESRB uh, uh, Super Hang On that I know that it's like a later, uh, you know, like re release. I, so that's why I, I kept the, the the old one and uh, I have like an original one as well. I have, um, I, I didn't, like I've had this for cart for so long, so long, and I can't believe. There are so many cut scenes. There's too many cut scenes. There's I can't like believe it took me so long to realize what, like, because I just didn't give it any thought. I have an ESRB Super Punch Out, but not just ESRB, e -E -E ESRB E, which E, it was KA first, right? Yeah. E didn't come about, E for everyone, until 97, I think. Like, I want to say toward the end of 97. So this... Cart, I mean, this is a made in Japan Netflix. cart. I mean, it's a great looking cart, you know, with the crisp, really crisp label. You know, not not like a lot of the later print runs of games that had like the more, uh, like the less glossy I ones mean, that I say made in Mexico. Um, like the you made in Japan talk. ones are the ones that have like the, the crisp, gr it. glossy label. Um, uh, but yeah, like I just never thought about it. And then, it, you know, it was probably actually good vibe collecting. I think you probably pointed it out and maybe some scene in some B-roll or something. I don't know. But it was, I was like, wait, this was, this was printed after the the N64 had been out a, a, a while at least. I mean, this was, this could have been printed in 97 or 98, which is, I mean, I've had this for a long time. I'm sure I got it at Funko Land. So whoever bought this did not own it for very long before trading it in. So, but it's just, I, I thought most of the, I, I did not, I, I thought most of those were, those later Super Nintendo print games were made in Mexico and not made in Japan like this one. So it's just, I don't know. It's surpri it surprised me. Um, but oh, I, I want to show real quick. I want to show this German Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. Um, it was 10 euros, which is, you know, I, I'd say a good price, uh, probably similar, but maybe a little better price than you see in the U.S. I've been looking for the three. I, I, I had seen it many times, but, you know, just kept playing off buying the 360 version. I wanted to get it, though, because it was backwards compatible. I used to have the PS3 version. I bought it day one, played it with friends. It was fine. I mean, you know, people really hated it before it even came out just because it just wasn't what they wanted out of Resident Evil. You know, played it online with friends and it was it was fine. It was fine. It was fine. It was fine. But, I, you know, because I love Resident Evil, I somewhat regretted selling it. Wanted to get it again, so I've been. I was like, "Well, it's backwards compatible on 360. Why not get the 360 version?" Well, look how dull this cover is. Like the Xbox 360 font is normal color, but the actual print is um, very faded, mm -hmm. and so is the spine. Um, the back looks normal, pretty much, but there's this big yellow, and this is, you know, it's not a sticker or anything. It's part of the actual cover. This big yellow banner that says "Nicht, nicht für Verbesvecke, nicht zum weiter Verkauf um, And also, the disc itself is all plain white, um, very plain text on it, and it says "Promotional disc, not for resale." So this was like a press copy, hmm. uh, and I just. I just thought, I thought, you know, it's, it's like kind of one of those cases where it's like, I mean, it's not a game I'm super excited to get again, but it's a game that I felt like I should have again. And this is, this is a way to make that purchase feel unique. And now I have like something interesting to show for it, you know, 
if I, you know, did want to show it in a video. It's just something unique, you know. You're not so. However, this got into the into circulation. I mean, of course, Capcom probably doesn't doesn't care now. Um, but hang on one second, real quick. I want to want to bring up my camera and translate this uh, label. Okay. Um, well. Oh wait, I'm saying Japanese to English. That ain't gonna work. German to English. <laughs> I just think go. it's funny you've been talking about this faded cover for like seven minutes straight. No nonsense. <laughs> I don't know. At least, at least five minutes. Uh, for promotional <laughs> purposes only, not for resale. I don't know. I think it's cool. <laughs> anyway, what did you get? All right, so I'll start with my big heavy hitter because that was like the first thing I got at the same time as you my guys, Soul that Blazer. Soul Blazer. This is something I've been like almost getting like many times. Uh, it's the uh, Adventures of Batman and Robin on the uh, Super Nintendo. You know, I I tried that. Uh, I tried that on EverDrive. Oh, recently? Like after no, I got it? years ago, years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember like not being that impressed. I remember getting pretty confused, like in the, in like the, the big tent. The big like, tent. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's like right at the beginning of the game, right? Yeah. It's like a roller coaster. And I'm sure it's like, I remember just like kind of not understanding a lot of things and just being like, eh. Yeah. But then like, you know, I, I heard more and more people talk about how good it was, including you. And I'm just like, maybe I wasn't, maybe I was just being dismissive of it from the outset and just mm-hmm. not giving it the chance it deserved. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, it, it's funny because I want to tr- give it another shot. And I almost unintentionally started only getting Konami stuff for a little while there <laughs> at the convention. Uh, I got that. And then, uh, at that, like another one, another, uh, booth I got, uh, you know, cause I got the, uh, Gradius Gaiden off of eBay and that like led me down like, Oh, I want to get some of these, uh, shooters. And I already had, um, like Parodius, like the first Parodius release, uh, on PS one. So I ended up getting the uh, the Gradius Deluxe Pack, PS One, uh, and then in that same batch, I ended up getting uh, Sexy Parodius, which that was another big get, and that was yeah, like yeah. a crazy price, right? What wasn't it? A, wasn't it like a super low price? No, 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 that it was not that one. So like on the last day, I found there was this one place that was selling. Uh, I feel like they're selling. Uh, Game Boy Advance games for like really good prices, and I oh yeah I forgot to grab those other ones here, but um, I'll go and get them in a second. Uh, but they had a whole bunch of stuff. I feel like there's like random things that were super low, and I knew that there was like one more Parodius game uh, on the uh, PS One that was like it was like a, like an eighty to a hundred dollars, and there was a small little uh, basket of PS One games that said. Japanese PS1 games at a, uh, like, really low prices. So I started going through, and I didn't even expect to find it, and I immediately found that that third Parodius game that I was that I was looking for. Uh, it was $40. And it was, it, like, normally goes for, like, 80 to 90 wow. to $100. And in that Good same, gift. in that same thing, I found, uh, the PS1 version of uh, Show Anarchy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and from them, I don't have it. Uh, yeah, it's the, uh, the, the whatever, Oshibari, Oshibari, uh, GQ, uh, Oshibari Parodius. Yeah, the, the Forever With You. Oshibari? The forever With Me, sorry. Forever With You. I think that's just like a play on the... Uh, um, on, uh, GQ Ocean Parodius. Uh, but from the, I forgot to grab them. But I at that same booth, I got like all three Midway Arcade Treasures on on PS2, 
And even the third one. So the third one, I would regularly see it for like 10 to $20. Which is the one that has like some Dreamcast games, like Dreamcast versions of like R Rush 2046 or whatever on there. And uh, Hydro Thunder and stuff. And I, it was $5. Volume 2 was like $7, and Volume 1 was $5. So I got those. That was Those were good good deals. I feel like that was a good deal. They um, were good deals. And if anybody had seen the, uh, the Classic Gaming Quarterly um, Let's let's Play of uh, uh, Kaze no, no, no Tom, the, air, the, the uh, hot air balloon game. This, this, was, uh, this was actually free. <laughs> I w oh, I found it? it in a big bin of like cheap uh, PS1 games, and I grabbed it and I was like, I can't justify because I didn't have any cash on me, and I was like, I can't justify like making them like run a credit card for uh, for five bucks. So I'm just like looking through and I'm like, I'm just trying to find something, and he's like, you know what? You just take that. <laughs> you can just have it. <laughs> <laughs> you should, you should like stream it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I already talked to Chris about it. Like he he did that whole let's play, and it's like, oh, we could probably do a stream about that. As as Tri mentioned earlier, I got a sealed, soon to be unsealed version of Eternal Sonata. I, yeah. There's no reason for me to keep it sealed. And the other stuff I got, I got that. Well, two of them I got that same vendor as I got the, uh, like the Cho Anaki and the um, Herodias. Uh, they, I felt like they had really good prices for uh, Game Boy Advance games, and nobody was looking at them. Yeah. Um, and I got the uh, 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 River City Ransom EX on Game Boy Advance, and also uh, Double Dragon Advance. And allowing yeah. myself to go car only has been, you know, a, oh. a, a good thing for me. Yes. Well, you know, I, because, you know, I, I bought GBA games, you know, from day, day one, kept the boxes. And, like, just for the longest time, like, I, I didn't buy any used GBA games. I bought maybe one, and it was in the box anyway. So, like, I just through no real effort had just ended up with box only GBA games. Mm -hmm. But then like after a point, I felt like, you know, there's a lot of games I'm not buying because I, I, you know, it's just way too expensive to buy it in right. a box. And I'm just like turning my nose up at GBA games because I'm like, well, they're too expensive for me. Yeah. And then, like, just dropping the box. I mean, I did it a long time ago at, the, at this point. But, yeah, mm -hmm. dropping the box requirement was uh, very liberating. And it ex greatly expanded my GBA uh, yeah. horizon. And that's kind of what I'm going through now. The last thing I got uh, was something I had forgotten even existed. And then it just popped into my mind one morning. I think it was Sunday morning when I thought I was, like, done buying stuff. And uh, I asked around, nobody had it. And then, like, one place I asked, and, like, no, we don't have it. And then another guy was like, actually, we do. It's over here. And uh, he has a manual with it. All the manuals, like, packed away right now. Uh, but that's uh, for the Game Boy Advance. That's uh, Shining Force Resurrection of the Dark Dragon, which is a remake of the first Shining game, Shining Force. Yeah, it's like uh, a remake. It's got totally different graphics and everything. Yeah, it's like, like a full-on remake. It has like yeah, new characters I, and stuff like that. Like I, it's like one of those, just one of those things that I never really I thought about that even existed. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's cool and it's something that I, uh, I don't know. I didn't, even, I forgot it existed and I randomly, I think I might have played it on like, like on the pocket, just like like on the Open FPGA core, on the pocket, and I was like, oh, I didn't even realize that this was like a full on remake and i forgot it existed after that and then i popped in my head that morning i'm gonna ask around about it and uh it was 60 but it was i i feel like it's, it's worth it and i i i wonder if a lot of people even know it exists you know yeah um 
I don't know if there's anything else that I'm missing. I mean, well, uh, I, I took some had, photos, but I can see if there's anything that I missed. I, we had some good hauls, good time. You know, the one thing I'll say about game shopping with Corey at, at conventions, <laughs> he, he's really bad at when you're you're at a booth with good prices. He'll like often tell the vendor, like, "Man, like you've got some really good prices." <laughs> well, I want them to feel good, right? <laughs> well, yeah, but that's. <laughs> It feels risky to me. <laughs> There's only one. Maybe music af and... after you've bought from them, then you tell them their prices are good. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they're thinking oh, their price. But after yeah. they might be going home and thinking, maybe my prices are too good. Yeah. You won't. You won't have such good prices next year. <laughs> I know. I also got this. <laughs> I, I get what you mean, though. I get what you mean, though. Most of them probably are pricing their stuff. Oh, hang on. There's like... Well and know it. And two, it, three it other is, things. I, it's forgot. probably safe to compliment them on it. It probably is safe. <laughs> probably safe, yes. All right. There, there's still, three things that I forgot. Not including I'm reluctant those, to do that. Uh, the Midway Arcade Treasures. Um... I didn't have the second one, so I just got the Japanese version. It's like Clockwork Night 2. Pepero Chow's Adventure. Pepero the... Chow. And I never had this, but I thought it'd be just kind of a cool thing to have. And that's a, a Lunar Magic School. And the last thing I got is a, I got a Boku, no, Boku, Boku no Natsuyasumi 2 on the PS2. Did you... Uh... Did you download uh, Japanese? Uh, you download Hiragana and Katakana flashcard apps? So I've been I've been do? using uh, this thing called just is called Kana. Uh huh. And I'm doing it every day. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, you you start recognizing you start it a lot, lot quicker things. than you yeah. think you will, right? And it's kind of fascinating. Right. Yeah. Like Hiragana, Katakana, not as hard to to get a decent handle on as you would think. Like it, you know it. You know, I, 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 I still get tripped up on some, and especially, like, stylized text is pretty difficult, but it's, uh, you'll be surprised how not that difficult Hiragana and Katakana. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, uh, just need to do it every day. Like, every now day. you can recognize the no in bots, bo Boku no Natsu Yasumi pretty easily, can't you? Uh, maybe. I don't know. It's just <laughs> giving me certain... I mean, the no is kind of just like a little... Well, I, I'm not there yet. I'm, so, I, I I set it to a slow mode where it makes me oh, okay. do. Yeah, Cheese Meister just posted the no. Okay. Um, but I thought that would be fun. So, um, really quick, I saw the the Paul Sutton says. I remember I was talking about that with somebody. I don't remember it being this way. The person insisted that there was only one music track that repeated. Is are you talking about in Shining Force? Is that something that? Earlier, Paul Sutton was saying something about it, bad emulation and like some of the Midway stuff, maybe. Oh, okay. I don't right. know if that's what he was talking about. I mean, I, I had those. Or, oh, and I don't know. In Shining Force? I mean, that seems kind of crazy, right? If it just has like the that, one. That, that seems, that's got to be an exaggeration. Yeah, I, I, I'll check it out, though. It's got to be an exaggeration. I mean, regardless, it's an interesting thing that could be worth... I mean, we were talking, actually, about... I mean, let's not say what it is, but we were talking about a video subject that sounds really fun. Yeah. That if that would that game would fit into pretty nicely. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, we should, we should try to do that video in a couple of months from now. Yeah, I've, I've already... Made a made a script for it. I think made a document for it. Good, good, good. Because yeah, yeah. I actually had I had literally not even thought about it since we were at that Thai restaurant. So I nearly forgot yeah. until just now. Well, the I'm uh, glad you've got a document going. The midway stuff is because we're definitely going to do another one of those compilations videos. I mean, we'll yes. probably do several more of those just because there's so many, and there's yeah. so many we skipped skipped over in this. <laughs> um. Uh, Paul, really quick, I, I one of the first per people I asked about that was uh, was Timber from from TNL. He was he is a vendor there. I've seen him the last oh. two years. 
Which which vendor? I, I didn't I didn't know you knew a TNL. Oh yeah, yeah. He was a uh, he's he is a vendor there. Uh, I saw him last year too. Um, I don't which know. one are you talking? I don't know. About? I don't I don't know if I, I, if you I don't know the name of his. Uh, he had like a he had a headband on. Like a like a bandana oh. headband. Um, I don't know. Probably saw him. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I had mentioned that I had bought those uh the Kiki Kai Kai games from you. And he said like you stayed with him or something when you sold your uh your um your car. Your uh uh what is it? Why can't I think of the game? The um, the Sega off road game. I, I why can't I think of it? Whatever. Um, but he's, he had mentioned you'd maybe stayed with him or something. Uh, the podcast isn't done. Like Chris and I have been talking about it, recording uh, very soon. We were supposed to maybe this. Uh, maybe we we can do it this week. Yeah, I mean, you just got to record and it's done. I know, I know. Uh, but it's not done. It's just well, I mean, like what I mean is you record items. and then the video, the episode yeah, is done. Yeah, Chris There's was no a bit sick for a, for a while there. So, uh, anyways, oh, <laughs> we just met up for lunch. Okay, so you didn't. Maybe maybe I'd misunderstood him. Um. Anyways. I don't know if I, if I got anything else. No, that's oh, that's my whole good. pickup list. It's good to good to be back streaming. I think. Yeah. Um, it's definitely my... been a minute, so we're back to. Yeah. I don't think I don't think at least on my end I don't think there's anything unusual coming about for a while. No, so. but but John will be joining It'll us be for a stream. Place. Either it might it could be as early as next week. Oh yeah, that's right. Because he's gonna that's be right. he's gonna be here uh, starting next weekend. Excellent. Yeah. Well, so we'll have to come up with a. Uh, what what we might do is go through all of those demo discs that Paul Sutton sent me when I, when I oh, bought those Kiki guy, that guy, guy games fun. from. That would be fun. Yeah, we had, we talked about doing that. I was like, oh, I got all these demos. We should do a. A stream with us. It's like, oh, that sounds a lot of like a lot of fun. Anyways, I think that's gonna do it. I hope everyone has a great week, and uh, thank you to everybody for uh, donating tonight. It's, it's great to be back. And uh, all right, everyone have a great week. Good night. Take care. <laughs>